Thank you. Hello, Gladys. Tea, no sugar. Tea, no milk. Yeah. Oh. And how about you? Do you want your tea without milk or without sugar? Without tea. Th For me, coffee. <laughs> You're in early tonight. Yeah, we come early to do the homework. Oh. Every class time we are getting it wrong, so we make a plan to meet here and do it all together. Yeah. Oh. Plenty smart, huh? Oh. <laughs> here we are. I hope we are not being late. No, we just got here ourselves. You want a tea? Oh, thank you very much. Not so <laughs> mine. Thousand apologies. Much better do the homework first, before Mr. Brogno arrives. That's a good idea. Okay, first question. Give a single noun to replace the following phrase. A person who has reached the age of 100. Anybody have any ideas? Sure. Very old man. <laughs> That's not right. She, si, hombre. 100 year old. Very old man. Now, we want one word for someone who's at a hundred. Ah. Oh, blimey. I'm doing that. Farouk. What is Farouk? Uh -huh. My uncle. He's being a hundred years old. That is not being the answer, you tandoori tweet. <laughs> All right, you Punjabi prawn. You tell us the answer. Centurion. Well, that sounds okay to me. Okay, okay. Everybody put down Centurion. <laughs> Next question. Right. Give the past tense and the past participle of the following verbs. Cling. Clunk. That's right. Clunk. But well, that's the past tense. Now we want the past possible. Cling. Clung. Clang. That's right. Oh, blimey. Mr. Brown will be surprised when he find out how clever we are. <laughs> Next question. Past tense and past participle of the word fly. Flood. <laughs> no, no, not a flood. Flyed. <laughs> That's better. Flyed. We want one more. We get fly, flied, flied. <laughs> okay. Hey, we must do the homework like this every time, huh? And the next <laughs> question. Give opposite in meaning to following nouns. Disappointment. That appointment. <laughs> It's still respectful. The uh, opposite of uh, disappointment is uh, joy. Uh, Okey Tokyo. <laughs> Can I have some milk, please, Gladys? Yeah. Hey, Daniel. What you got in the pram? A bag of the potatoes. Uh, <laughs> no potatoes. Bambino. <laughs> Hello, Bambino. Uh, yeah. <laughs> hey, he speak to me. <laughs> Uh, nice little boy. How are you knowing he's a little boy? Easy. He's got what every little boy has. Blue clothes. <laughs> Here, is it yours? No, it belongs to the family I work as au pair. Oh. They had to go out tonight, so I thought I'd bring him here to the lessons. Oh, you can't do that. Why not? Well, it's against regulations. Oh, Miss Courtney would never allow it. Are you sure? I'm positive. But what am I going to do? I don't want to miss my classes. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do. You can leave him here behind my counter and collect him when you go home. Thank you, Gladys. Oh, don't mention it. <laughs> See you later, boys. <laughs> Holy ravioli. <laughs> what I'm thinking now, I could be excommunicated. <laughs> I was excommunicated five minutes ago. Give <laughs> a collective noun to describe a group of footballers. Uh, Real Madrid. <laughs> that is no good answer. The correct answer is a team. Hey, that's right. Team. Yeah. <laughs> Who said that? I did. <laughs> Whoops, Sada Daisy. Hey, how long have you been here? Long enough. Look, homework means work you do at home, individually, not here collectively. As you obviously cannot be trusted, you'll all stay behind after class and do your homework then. Uh, now, come along, uh, down to the uh, uh, Now then, what about a nice smile now for your then. auntie Glad? Oh, you know you're a lovely fella. <laughs> I say, 
<laughs> now this is going to tickle your tummy. <laughs> Here, give us a nice kiss. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello, Sid. Gladys, look, what you do is your own affair, but I shouldn't let Miss Courtney catch you at it. No, what do you mean? I heard you. Oh, I'm doing it as a favour. <laughs> Here. <laughs> Want to tickle his tummy? <laughs> tickle his tummy, he likes it, look. Oh, <laughs> it's a saucepan lid. <laughs> a little lid bath. It's Danielle's. I'm looking after it for her. Yeah? Night. He's a lovely little fella. <laughs> How are you then? <laughs> goochie, goochie, goochie. <laughs> goochie. He <laughs> <I> <laughs> 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 fed me. Hold on, everybody. Places, please. Quickest possible. Uh, thank you, Juan. Right, now that we've lost Zoltan and Ingrid, uh, I suggest we fill up these empty places. Jamila, would you like to come back to the front? No, Master G. I am very happy to be sit at backside. <laughs> Taro? Japanese philosopher say, a person who is in front, Lionel, more likely to get home, shot at. <laughs> ah, so. <laughs> Ali and Suli, why don't you come out here then, all right? Shot Jelly good. Right, now, tonight, by way of a change, we are going to do a crossword. Now, do you all know what a crossword is? Yeah, I'm very good. Well, I shall ask you each a clue and hope that I get some correct answers. We'll start with you, Juan. Sí, señor. One across, the feminine of horse. Eh, por favor. <laughs> the feminine of horse. You've heard of the word horse. Ah, sí, sí. Uh, so a throat. <laughs> no, that's horse. Ah, sorry. Now, come along, the feminine of horse. Eh, uh, lady horse. <laughs> No, anybody know? Yeah, feminine of horse, mare. Well done. Squeeze me, please. Yes, Sally? I am thinking mare is not feminine. Yes, it is. Oh, no. Mare of London is most definitely masculine. <laughs> that is a different sort of mare. That's M A Y O R. <laughs> Jelly good. <laughs> Ranjit, three across, not down. I am knowing it is not down because you are saying it's across. <laughs> not down is the clue. Thousand apologies. Well, what is the answer? No, what is not the answer? <laughs> the answer is up. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. Right, Giovanni, six across, a punctuation mark used to indicate antithesis or quotation. <laughs> Ask me another. <laughs> Come along, think. I'll give you another clue. It's not a comma, but it begins with a C. <laughs> Question mark. <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. Anybody know? Colon. Good. Colon. O L O N. Right. Ali. Seven across. A word used to describe a set of four musicians. Beatles. <laughs> no, no, not a group, although the Beatles were one of these. Oh, blimey. <laughs> if you have a cake and you cut it into four, you then have four pieces. <laughs> yeah, but what is each piece called? A slice? <laughs> Water. Jelly good. <laughs> Now, what do we call four musicians? Uh, anybody? Qu quartet? Good, quartet. Well done. R T E T. Right. Uh, Suli, eight across to tell an untruth. To spread decadent Western propaganda about <laughs> four years in the <laughs> yeah, Well, uh, the correct answer is love. Same thing. <laughs> so that's a matter of opinion. L I E. Right. Um, Jamila, one down, the plural of mouse. Uh, mouses. <laughs> oh, no, Jamila, think. Look, look at the board. It's M blank, C blank. Any idea? No, Master G. I am also B blank. <laughs> Mice. Ah. Mickey. <laughs> Mickey? Ah, 
Mickey Mouse's. Mice. <laughs> Sorry, Master D. Right, uh, Taro. Ah, so. <laughs> two down, to consign or dismiss to an inferior position. Do you know the answer? Not known. Question. <laughs> Look, if a football team uh, finish at the bottom of the league, then it means that they are... Very bad old team. <laughs> they get relegated. So the answer to two down is relegate. Right. Um, Max. Yes, Bosh. Four down, the opposite of wealth. Skint. <laughs> no. Broke? No. If you are very poor, what state are you in? Desperate. <laughs> Mr. Brown, can I speak to Danielle outside? Yes, if you must. It, it's very personal. Oh, I am. What's the matter? The baby's done a bunk. <laughs> Is that the same as doing a pui? <laughs> no, he's gone. Gone? Yes. Gladys went into the ladies. When she came out, there he was, gone. That is impossible. Well, if you don't believe it, come and have a look for yourself. But if he's not there, where can he be? I, I haven't got the faintest idea. Can anybody tell me the rule about I and E? Jamila? I before E, excepting after C. Very good. Juan. Juan! Si, senor. <laughs> you are not paying attention. Si, plenty attention. <laughs> All right, what did I just say? You say, Juan, you're not paying attention. <laughs> uh, yes, be before that one. Uh, before that, uh, you're right. I know, pay attention. <laughs> we were discussing I before E, except after C. Ah, it's all right. <laughs> spell receipt. Por favor. You heard spell receipt. Uh, R, E, C, uh, I before E, except C. <laughs> e. Uh. I, T. <laughs> uh, come on, think. You've missed something out. What comes before tea? Uh, breakfast. <laughs> uh, I am not amused. Well, you're not here to make jokes, for me. Ah, sorry, amigo. P T. Sorry. Right. <laughs> Max, what always follows a cue? People who are queuing. <laughs> the letter Q. Ah. Ah. Sure. L M N O P Q R. <laughs> We're discussing spelling, not the alphabet. If a word begins with Q, what is the next letter? I don't know, Bosch. <coughs> you. Me what? <laughs> Q U. Only you can follow a Q. <laughs> okay. Well, no. Yes, it is most important. Ah, well, uh, carry on studying chapter 10 on spelling. I shan't be long. <coughs> is it, um, is it something I've done? I sincerely hope not. <laughs> Take a look at that. It's a pram. Oh, well done, Mr. Brown. <laughs> what do you normally associate with prams? Babies? Exactly. Good Lord, you're not, are you? <laughs> Expecting? Oh, don't be ridiculous. <laughs> what was that? A look in the pram. <laughs> it's a baby. Well, it's certainly not a cocker spaniel. 
Now, you mustn't worry, Miss Courtney. I beg your pardon? These things happen even in the best families. There is no shame these days in being an unmarried mother. <laughs> oh, you silly little man. It's not mine. I found it in the canteen. I have spoken to Gladys, but she denies all knowledge of it. The poor little mite has obviously been abandoned. Oh, how Dickensian. I can only assume that one of the students from this school has deliberately abandoned that baby on our doorstep. I thought you said it was in the canteen. Well, that's just a figure of speech, Mr Brown. <laughs> now, I shall ask all the teachers to question their respective classes in an effort to discover the guilty party. OK, I'll go and question my... Oh, wife. no, you won't. You will stay here and look after the baby while I inform the rest of the staff. What? <laughs> don't cry, don't cry. <laughs> come, on, look, uh, come over here and uh, look at all the trees. Eh? <laughs> See all the birdies chirping? <laughs> there, isn't that nice? Eh? <laughs> there we are. Rock a bye, baby, on the treetop. When the wind blows, the cradle will rock. When the bow breaks, the cradle will fall, and down will come, baby cradle. Down. Yeah. What did you think of that, Lenny? Well, stay there, and I'll go and get you a choppy bit. <laughs> what am I going to do? Not to worry. We find him for you. We search at the school. Sid and Gladys, they have looked everywhere. Maybe he's being baby napped. <laughs> you must be mean kidnapped. Yes, please. Mr. and Mrs. Barclay, they are going to kill me. How am I going to tell them I've lost their baby? Why not write them a letter? <laughs> I got an idea. If somebody stole Daniel's baby, why not we go outside and steal someone else's baby? <laughs> Don't be so stupid, Max. <laughs> down and study your books. And why are you crying? Oh, Miss Courtney, I've done something very bad. Oh, what you do outside is no concern of mine. That's is something in the school. Where's my baby? Baby? <laughs> oh, so it's yours, is it? You know about it? I found it. Thank heavens, I must go to him. Now, just a moment. Come here, I want a word with you. Now, I know that we live in a permissive society, <laughs> and these things are not uncommon. But you must think of the baby. Or don't you love him a little? I love him very much. Good. Do you know who the father is? Yes. Well, then, have you never considered marrying him? How can I? He's only nine months old. <laughs> Not the baby, the father. I don't think his wife will be very happy. He's a married man. Yes. Oh, well, that's typical. They don't care who they get into trouble. It wasn't his fault. It was his wife's idea. <laughs> Heavens, how awful. Do your parents know the situation you're in? Yes. Well, surely they don't approve. Certainly. Next year, my sister is coming to England to do the same. <laughs> Extraordinary. Oh, no. Many French girls want to be au pairs. Au pair? Yes. This baby, it belongs to the family you work for. That's right. Thank heaven for that. <laughs> Pardon? It doesn't matter. I promise I won't bring him into school again. Well, see that you don't. Can I bring him into this class? No, he can stay where he is. He's in very good hands. <coughs> oh, there you are. Oh, oh, thank goodness. Well, what a shame. Come on, dear Auntie Glad. Yes, come on then. Oh, we're we'll going to Auntie Glad. Yes, my darling. We're we'll going to get a little drink of milk, please. Come on then. There. There. Come on, now drink this. Do we? Eh? You'll feel better. Oh, at least he stopped crying. Perhaps he's dozed off. Here we are, then. Here's a chocky bicky for you. He's gone. Perhaps he's dipped out for a walk. <laughs> he's too young to walk. He can just about crawl. 
Well, he's got to be here somewhere. Well, where? I don't know. <laughs> oh, my God. The window is open. Well, what about it? He could have crawled out. Could he? Well, of course it couldn't. Could it? <laughs> they crawled anywhere. I was the biggest crawler in our street. <laughs> no, I can believe that. Well, I'm too frightened to look. Oh. It's not fair. <laughs> Perhaps he's crawled along the edge and gone right the way round. Oh, well, you better pull round and have a look. No, not me. I, I can't stand heights. I've got claustrophobia. Vertigo. Yeah, I've got that in my shoulder as well. <laughs> well, I'll give you a bunker. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to see to me boiler. Well, aren't you staying here? No, no, I can't stand the sight of blood. I took it for a drink of milkies. Well, wait here a minute. Oh, very well. <laughs> now, take this baby back to the canteen and keep it there. I never want to see it again. Oh, very well. Oh, my baby, is he all right? Yes. I take him to the classroom. Oh, no. Miss Courtney said I have to keep him in the canteen. Oh, no. I not take the chance of losing him again. Oh, well, please yourself. Uh, he did it, then? Yeah. Who did what? Mr Brown, he saved the baby off the window ledge. What are you talking about? The baby's never been on the window ledge. No? No. Well, Mr. Brown is. <laughs> Baby. Yeah, I would love to have a baby like that. You come out with me tonight, no. and I'll... Hey, there's Professori. Oh, oh, Blammy's out of his mind. Mr. Brown, please come in. Oh, 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 oh. All right, Mr. Brown. Just about. How's the baby? Oh, he's OK. Oh, thank goodness for that. Would you hold him for me for a moment? Well, I don't think I can really. No, do while I fix his blanket. Oh, well, hurry up. Mr. Brown. <laughs> What is that baby doing in the classroom? Wait. I'll give it three guesses. <laughs>
Cervantes. Buenas tardes, señora. In the first place, Mr. Cervantes, I am not a señora. Señorita. And in the second place, I would be much obliged if you would speak English in this school. So right. And another thing, Mr. Cervantes, there is no such word in the English language as so right. The correct terminology is it is all right, or it's all right, or even just all right. Do you understand? So right. <laughs> I give up. Whatever is the matter. I'm going to be sick. I'm not here, I hope. My stomach, she is down side up. Well, for heaven's sake, why don't you go and see a doctor? I am going tonight after lessons. <laughs> hey, amigo, would you like a cigar? No, no, thank you. You are not yourself tonight. Of course he is himself. Who else could he be? <laughs> Sumi means something is wrong. She is right. Oh. What is it, Juan? I am going to be sick. Holy ravioli. <laughs> you changed your religion. Oh. Hey, the Pope's not going to like that. <laughs> I am welcoming you like a brother. But first, you must be wearing the turban. Uh, what's the matter? You are crazy. I am sick in my stomach. Perdón, perdón. I am going to see if I have fever. In Japan? Yes. We take a temperature from different places. <laughs> we not put thermometer in mouth. I am not want to want to know where you we put thermometer. <laughs> we put it under. Good evening. Good morning, your places, everybody. Thank you. Oh, something the matter, one? <laughs> what? He's a say he's not the feeling very well. Oh, really? What's wrong? <laughs> Sorry, what did you say? He's a say stop asking the stupid questions. <laughs> he's got a thermometer in his mouth. <laughs> Have you got a temperature? <laughs> what? A moment. Oh. Santa Madre! <laughs> what is it? I am dead! <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. See, I have no temperature. You're looking at the wrong end. Ah, it's all right. What is it? 98.4. <laughs> I am dying. Well, that's normal. Eh, hey, maybe that thermometer is not working. Yes, it is. And up to now, it's the only thing that's working in this classroom. Now, sit down. Yes. yes. You oh. told me I was yes. sick. Sit down, sir. Now, you have all failed your Lower Cambridge Certificate Examination once, and I don't want a repetition of that at the end of this term. So, tonight, I'm going to ask each of you to pick one of the ten subjects I have written on the blackboard, and then I shall ask you questions on them. Very straightforward. Music, British history, the royal family, poetry, Shakespeare, etc. All right? Now, who is going to start the ball rolling? We are not having a ball to be rolling anywhere. <laughs> all right, Ali, just for that, you can start. Now, which subject do you pick? Oh, blame me. <laughs> Television. Television. Right. Who is known as the father of television? Eamon Andrews. <laughs> Logie Baird. Oh, blimey. I'm seeing him last night with his little friend, Boo Boo. <laughs> That's Yogi Bear. I'm talking about Logie Baird, the man who invented television. Sorry, please. Right. How much is a television license? I'm not knowing. I never buy one. <laughs> I hope you realise you can get into serious trouble for not having a licence. Uh, please tell me something. The money for licences for BBC, yes? Yes. Then I'm jolly OK. I only watch ITV. <laughs> it doesn't work that way, Ali. You still need a licence. Now, Anna, which subject would you like? The Royal Family. The Royal Family. Right. Who is the Prince of Wales? Harry Seacombe. <laughs> Prince Charles. Oh. Yeah. Which recent King of England was never crowned? Edward Trugor Vinza. Good. Max, pick a subject. Uh, British politics. British politics, right. What, where does the term Gladstone bag come from? Mrs. Gladstone. <laughs> mm. Gladstone bag is the name given to a bag made popular by one of our Prime Ministers, William Ewart Gladstone. Sorry, boss. I'll ask you another. What function does the mace have in the House of Commons? Uh, they have the mace... Yes? Uh, to eat the cheese. <laughs> uh, 
That's mice. <laughs> maybe I pick another subject. Now, maybe you just sit down. Okay. <laughs> Daniel, let's see which subject you prefer. I prefer the subject of love. Yes, I'm sure you do, but that is not written on the board. So would you please pick one that is written down? Okay. Shakespeare. Shakespeare. Right. Who was Shakespeare's wife? Mrs. Shakespeare. <laughs> Very clever, but what was her maiden name? I do not know. Anne Hathaway. Can you name three of the plays Shakespeare wrote? Romeo and Juliet. Good. As you like it. One more. I do not know any more. Well, I'll give you a clue. King Kong. <laughs> Leah. Yeah. Taro. Asso. <laughs> Which subject do you choose? Poetry. Poetry. Right. Who wrote upon Westminster Bridge? Not no. <laughs> but uh, seems funny play to write. <laughs> it's a poem by Wordsworth. I'll ask you another. Who wrote to a field mouse? Sounds like a man who is uh, crazy in the head. <laughs> it was written by Robert Burns over 200 years ago. Jamila, pick a subject. The Bible. The Bible, right. Who was Samson? Victor Mechior. <laughs> I beg your pardon? He was being telly last week in film. Well, never mind the film. Who was he historically? Ah, acha. He was man who was be very strong. One night, he is be fancy a bit of hanky-panky with woman Delilah. <laughs> so, he is be hanky-pankying, and she is be ask him how he is be very strong. And he is be tell her it is in his long hair. So, one night when he is be fast asleep, she is be given shorty back and sides. <laughs> and when he is wake, he is be take prisoner and blinded. But when his hair is be grow long again, he is be pulled down palace. Is that the authorised version? <laughs> it is what I am be see on telly. Thank you, Jumela. Giovanni. Si, professore. Would you pick a subject, please? Eh, uh, music. Right, music. Give me something from the Pirates of Penzance. I never heard of them. <laughs> Are they a punk or a rock group? The Pirates of Penzance is one of the Savoy operas by Gilbert and Sullivan. Oh, I really like him. Who? Gilbert or Sullivan? I'm talking about Gilbert and Sullivan. Oh, OK. Any more? Yes. What can you tell me about Handel's Largo? Not much. I never drink the stuff. <laughs> I love... Your lack of general knowledge is no laughing matter. Pranjit, it's your turn. Pick a subject. The British is less. <laughs> I always... Right. What is the capital of England? E. <laughs> I'll rephrase that. What is the capital city of England? London. Correct. Can you name three English counties? Oh, dear me, I am not knowing any English counties. Not one? No. The only county I am knowing is the county of Monte Cristo. <laughs> That's count. Thousand apologies. Right, thank you. Suli, your subject, please. Only two rest, British history. Right. Who was known as the Black Prince? Mohammed Ari. <laughs> Why, uh, Edward, the son of Edward III. Very solid. But who invented the cotton spinning machine? Chang Hoi Fang. <laughs> Wrong. Sir Richard Arkwright. You litter that like copy invention from Hoi Fang. Just as all the Western imperialists steal invention from Chinese scientists. China first to invent telephone, television, radio, refrigerators, and discover penicillin, radium, and lots of other things. Rubbish. No. Uh, well, China not invent rubbish. <laughs> you know, some of them just talk it. Juan. Si, senor. I pick subject. Yeah, well, this, 
There's only one left. It's Hobson's choice. No, Hobson's choice. British custom. <laughs> well, that's what I meant. Do you know anything about British uh, custom? Plenty, plenty. Oh, good. First, you have uh, green or red. Green or red what? British custom. <laughs> Do you have something to declare? You go on the red. <laughs> Nothing to declare? Green. No one. See, I know. No, the question is not about those sort of customs. It means the things that we British do that are peculiar to us. Ah, speak English. <laughs> well, a little more than that one. Look, I'll give you an example. November the 5th, Guy Fawkes Day, is something we celebrate only in Britain. Ah, any more? There's afternoon tea, cricket, the boat race. Good, good. Any more? Bobber Job Week, Chelsea Flip. Look, I'm supposed to be asking you the question. <laughs> So right. I, 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 terrible pain in my stomach. Oh, oh yeah, right. Uh, Suli, would you nip down and uh, I'm sorry. Would you run along and ask uh, Mrs. Foster to come and have a look at one? Nice little. Terrible. Yeah, well, lie on the table. It might be. Go on. Hey. Oh, 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 blimey. He's not looking very well. I'm dying. Nonsense. Don't be so pessimistic. <laughs> uh, professor is right. You're gonna be okay, cocky. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Mrs. Foster. Uh... Where does it hurt? Uh, stomach, stomach. Oh, e <laughs> Better get him to the hospital. I think that this man has appendicitis. Are you sure? Mr. Brown, I was a senior sister for several years. If this man is not attended to very quickly, it could prove fatal. Any sign of Mr. Brown yet, Sidney? Beg pardon? Mr. Brown. Oh, Mr. Brown. Oh, no, he's not back yet. This is most inconvenient. I don't know why he had to go to the hospital with Mr. Cervantes. Well, somebody had to go with him. <laughs> I come back. Don't tell me they've taken your appendix out already. Uh, no, half operation. Not necessary. No, oh, so you didn't have appendicitis after all? No. Pain was caused by abundante tortilla. Well, that sounds serious. What is it? Uh, too much eating. <laughs> pardon, pardon. And where is Mr. Brown? He no come back. What do you mean, he no come back? Uh, when we leave the hospital, we come down the step, and Mr. Brown, he missed just one step, and he break his leg. How could he possibly break his leg if he only missed one step? Step he missed, top step. <laughs> How's everything going? Very well, sister. Good. Did you remember to give Mr. Parker his blanket bath? I gave them all a blanket bath. All? Have I done something wrong? Blanket baths are for those patients who cannot bath themselves. They all seem to enjoy it, especially <laughs> Mr. Brown. It was lovely. I'm sure it was. I should think you've set him back at least a couple of weeks. I was only doing my best. Well, in future, can you remember that you are a student nurse? Not a geisha girl. Sorry, sister. <laughs> oh, by the way, Mr. Jones is back from surgery. We have three Mr. Jones in this ward. What is his initial? Uh, Jones, W. Good. I'll go and have a look at him. Is there anything you fancy? <laughs> yeah, but I don't think sister would approve. Oh, cheeky. Do you want a bottle? Oh, I couldn't have a light ale, could I? <laughs> not that sort of bottle. Ah, oh, no, thanks. Not until I've had the light ale, anyway. You're not getting it. I know, but it's worth a try. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do you, do you know when I'll be discharged? Probably tomorrow. Oh, thank goodness for that. I can't wait to get back to my students. Oh, shudder to think what they're doing without me. Oh, <laughs> I intend to find out how you're coming along with your English. We are learning very much the well English. That's right. I speak the English so good, nobody knows that I'm Italian. I find that very hard to believe. You see, even you don't know. <laughs> now, I am going to ask you some general questions on everyday topics. First of all, can anyone tell me what the first day of the week is? 
sunny day. No, it is not sunny day. Rainy day? <laughs> Sunday. Repeat it, please. It, please. <laughs> Repeat the word Sunday. Sunday. Mr. Nadim, name me two seasons. Uh, salt and pepper. <laughs> Those are seasonings. Now give me the names of two of the seasons of the year. Oh, dearie me. Anybody? Spring time. Spring time. Spring time. <laughs> Now, Mr. Nadine, what comes after springtime? Holiday time. <laughs> Summertime. Jelly good. Mr. Cervantes. Si, senora. What do the letters AC mean? Por favor. What does AC mean? Uh, four. AC has nothing to do with four. Sure. AC spade, AC hot, AC time, and AC. AC means alternating current. Ah, you're wrong. Wrong word. <laughs> Mr. Papandreas. Yes, Miss Courtney? I don't suppose you can give me the name of any other sort of current? Sure, black current. <laughs> I am talking about electricity. AC is alternating current, DC is direct current. Okay. Mr. Nagizumi. Ah, sir. <laughs> Signify if I said you were a dog in the manger. What well, sim? You're crazy in the head. <laughs> Beg your pardon? I am Manlo, not doggo. <laughs> you are also rather stupid. <laughs> Miss Schmidt. Yeah. You are on a train going to Glasgow. Why am I going to Glasgow? Doesn't matter why. <laughs> You want to sleep on the train? What would you ask for? A bed. <laughs> you would have a berth in the sleeping car. Nine. Beg your How can I have a berth when I'm not pregnant? <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. I save myself for when I meet Mr. Wright. <laughs> for your information, Miss Schmidt, a berth. B-E-R-T-H is the name given to a bed on a ship or a train. In Schuldigung, you must think I'm very stupid. That is the most sensible remark I have heard in this classroom so far. <laughs> Mademoiselle Favre. Oui, Mademoiselle Courtney. Where is St. Paul's? St. Paul's what? <laughs> St. Paul's Cathedral. <laughs> I do not know. It's somewhere in London, I think. It is near Luggett Circus. Have you ever been to Luggett Circus? No, but I have been to Billy Smart Circus. <laughs> You're all absolutely hopeless. Doesn't anybody know anything? Yes, please. I am knowing lots of things. Are you? Absolutely. Do you know what a Philistine is? Most certainly. It is medicine that is 45 in the over 40s. <laughs> it is nothing of the sort. Thousand apologies. You are all Philistines. Oh no, I am Pakistan. <laughs> Go to tea. Hey, Giovanni, you get me a cup of tea and I go on a phone hospital to see how is Mr. Brown. Okay, okay. It's all right. Orthopedic ward, Sister King. Hello. Hello. Uh, would you please tell me how is Mr. Brown? Mr. Brown? Uh, could I have the Christian name, please? Sure. Juan. <laughs> Juan. Is he Spanish? No, 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 no. I am Spanish. I see. Juan is Spanish for John, isn't it? Si, senora. Will you hold on a moment, please? <laughs> Brown John. <clears throat> Are you a relative? No, no, just a friend. Well, I'm afraid I have some rather bad news for you. You mean Mr. Brown is worst? 
he had a heart attack during the night. <laughs> oh, Santa Mar. You mean Mr. Brown is dead? <laughs> Good morning, Sydney. Good morning, Miss Courtney. It's very sad about Mr. Brown, isn't it? Terrible. I thought you might have gone to the funeral this morning. No. I've got far too upset. I know what you mean. It's so tragic. Taken so young. It's terrible. much alive. Uh, then whose funeral have the students gone to? Oh. <laughs> 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 Oi. Mr. Brown is trying to get through to us. I heard it as well. <laughs> you need to stop the thing. Hey! It's the bus! Yes. Praise be to Allah. Oh, terrible bread. <laughs> You're not dead. Thank you. Are you? Who is the man in coffin? Well, I expect it's another Mr. Brown. We must be making big celebration. Yeah, why we not go to the pub? Lighty yeah. hall? Yeah, yeah. I'll second that. Ah, hey, I push you. Hey, no, I push a professor. Ah, I, I push, push, push you. you. I push you, man. I'll push you. Buenas tardes. Go away. Hey, you don't mean that. You want a bet? Hey, we bring you some flowers. Oh, Juan, you shouldn't have spent money on flowers for me. I not spend money. We already bought them for your funeral. <laughs>
Then you're in some No, 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 no. Okie okay, dokie, no, okay, everybody. Yeah. Our troubles are over. <laughs> you are emigrating. <laughs> Excuse me if I'm not the laugh. We are going to make everybody rich. Hey, I am like very much to be rich. This time next week, we could have half a million pounds. We rob Bunko. <laughs> <laughs> we win on the football pools. Ah, you never win on them. Sure. We have a good system. All we gotta do is pick 11 matches. That gives us 220 lines. Oh, we're bound to get one line, right? All right. How much we each be pay? 20 p each. Okay, I pay. Now pick the match you think's gonna be a scoring draw. Okay. Chu Munter. Chu! Ah, Derby v Queen's Park. Derby Queen's Park. Okey cokey, next to customer. Uh, please, please. Okay, pick the match. Arsenal. Arsenal. No, no. <laughs> Fulham v Tokyo. Okey cokey. <laughs> Who's next? Here's my money. Okay, pick it a match. Hartlepool v Port Valley. Okay, okay. And the next one. Yes, please. My scoring match being Liverpool v the city of Bristol. <laughs> Liverpool the city of the Bristol. Okay, who's the next? What's going on here? We are doing the football poodles. You want to join in, Provisori? Only 20p. You could win a half a million. I could also lose 20p. What's it at 20p? Well, it may not mean much to you, but it does to me. I don't exactly earn a fortune teaching English. Why not? You ask for a lift up. <laughs> <laughs> More money. You mean a rise? Also. <laughs> Forget the 20p's. We give you the free line. Now, just yeah. pick at the match. Yeah, we're well, supposing we pick at the match later, all right? Right now, we've got work to do. Now, come on, in your places. Oh, oh, yeah. Settle down. Yeah. Right, now, tonight, we are going to concentrate on the art of conversation, all right? We'll start with you, Ali and Anna. Do you come out here, please? Now, you have never met before, and you are sitting on a park bench, Anna, uh, 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 when along comes Ali and sits next to you and starts a conversation, all right? Carry on. <coughs> uh, good morning, lady. <laughs> Come along, Anna, say something. I never speak to strange men in the park. <laughs> Very commendable, but let us assume that this time you do. Start again. Good morning, lady. Good morning. <laughs> it is being a very nice day. Yeah. Anna, this is supposed to be a conversation in English. Up to now, you've said good morning and yeah. Could you try and speak in English, please? Start again, Ali. A good morning, lady. Good morning. Oh, blame me. <laughs> It is being a very nice day. Yes. It is nice weather. Yes. It was also very nice weather yesterday. Yes. Perhaps it will also be nice weather tomorrow. Yes. Or perhaps it could be raining. Yes. Perhaps it could be raining. Yeah, all right, that'll do. Thank you both of you. Absolutely scintillating. Right, Juan. Would you come out, please? Right, now, you are sitting in a restaurant. A uh, Spanish restaurant. Yes, if you like. When uh, Suli enters. Uh, pardon, senor. What is a Chinese girl doing in a Spanish restaurant? Well, she likes Spanish food. Ah, it's all right. right. The restaurant is crowded, but there's an empty seat at Juan's table. All right? Juan, <laughs> what are you doing? Uh, I was leaning on the table. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> Excuse, please. This seat taken? No, you see. You see. Thank you. Allow me to introduce myself. Jung Su Lee. My name is Carlos. Juan, what do you mean, Carlos? Eh, uh, I never give my right name when I speak <laughs> Carlos. Smart, You're eh? not supposed to be picking her up, just having a conversation. <laughs> uh, you want a drink? I don't drink. Bad for river. Uh, cigarette? I don't smoke. Bad for rungs. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you're not married, eh? You are very loo. Oh. Hey, what's the matter with you? I just make a joke? What do you want to talk about? We could discuss whether dictatorship of proletariat better than dictatorship of bourgeois capitalists. We can't do that. Why not? 
because I don't understand what you're talking about. So, leaders, every conversation have to be a political rally. Chairman Mao, he say we must try and use every opportunity to spread socialist doctrine amongst unrightened people. Yeah, well, I'd be grateful if you would keep Chairman Mao out of the classroom, all right? Thank you, both of you, all right? Now, um, Max and Daniel. Would you come out, please? Right, now let us assume that you are at a party and you've just been introduced to Danielle. Now use your imagination and uh, make a conversation. <laughs> Hello, beautiful. Hello, gorgeous. Hey, uh, this party not very good, eh? Uh, why not we go uh, somewhere else? D'accord. Let's go back to my place. Okay. <laughs> this was a short conversation. Mr. Brown, there's an old geezer wants to see you. He's sitting in the canteen. What does he want? I don't know, but he said he's very urgent. Oh, very well. Right. While I'm away, you can do some exercises. Hey, I know plenty exercise. Uh, one, three, four, six, seven, nine, six, twenty-four. Oh, uh, not those sort of exercises. Exercises from your books, page 120. Sorry, wrong number. <laughs> Would you like another cup of tea, Mr. Um, uh... English. No, thank you. Ah. Oh. Oh, you know, you do remind me of my husband. Really? Yeah, just before he died. <laughs> ah, <laughs> Mr. Brownstone. Brown. Uh, Mr. Brown, yes. I'm English. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> no, my name is English. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, can we sit down? Well, I'm rather busy. I, I will keep you a moment. After all, this is a rather confidential matter. Hmm? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> My card. The English School of Languages, Principal H.C. English. That's right. Now then, I shall come straight to the point. Good. No use beating about the bush. No. After all, procrastination is a thief of time. Absolutely. Never put off till tomorrow what you could do today. Very true. Now then, where was I? <laughs> ah, yes, yes, of course. Thank you very much, Mr. Brownlow. Brown! 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 Yes. Well, now, you see, our teacher of English for foreign students has left us rather hurriedly, and I want you to take his place. Oh, you're offering me a job. Your name was given to me by one of your former students, Miss Svensson. Ah, yes, Ingrid. Ingrid. Uh, yes, but I like <laughs> uh, uh, as quickly as you can. Well, I haven't said I'll take the job yet. The starting salary is 5,000 a year, rising to 7,500 by yearly increments. That's very generous. The labourer is worthy of his hire. What do you say? Well, I'd, I'd like to think it over, if I may. Very well. Don't keep me waiting too long. I need to know by tomorrow. Goodbye, Mr. Um... Brown. I know, I know. <laughs> news, Mr. Brown. Oh, on the contrary. I've just been offered a job at 5,000 a year. That's nice. Hey, are you going to take it? Well, I said I'd think it over. I mean, after all, money isn't everything. Oh, that's true. Such a thing as job satisfaction. Yeah. That's something money can't buy. No. So, I've decided what to do. You're going to stay here? No, I'm taking the job. <laughs> <laughs> Leaving? Yeah, I'm sorry to spring it on you like this, Miss Courtney, but it's uh, too good an opportunity to miss. I see. And when do you propose to take up this new position? Well, he wants me to start right away, so I thought I'd report to him first thing in the morning. That doesn't give me much time to find a replacement. Yeah, I know, but I can't afford to wait and risk losing the job. Very well, Mr Brown. You have obviously made up your mind, and I wish you every success. Thank you. I hope you'll be happy, but I think I can safely say you won't find another principal like me. I'm sure I won't. <laughs> right, time's up. Uh, would you leave your books on my desk? Uh, but before you go, I've got something to tell you. 
I shan't be teaching you after tonight. Oh, oh Master Jesus. Deary me, have you got the bag? The bag? <laughs> yes, please. Has Mr. Coldrini given you the bag? <laughs> you mean the sack? Gallagher. <laughs> no, I shall be leaving for a better job. Ah, no, oh, no. no. We are being very sad to be losing you. I shall miss you very much. We shall all miss you. Eh, uh, maybe you change your mind, eh? Oh, I must strike while the iron is hot. <laughs> Holy ravioli. <laughs> You're gonna get a job in a laundry. <laughs> Just using a figure of speech. I should be doing the same job, but at a commercial school for a lot more money. Well, come along. Thank you, everybody. Well, I hope you have a much luck. Thank you, Giovanni. <laughs> oh, yeah. Amigo. Tell us again. May your days be filled with happiness. <laughs> Auf Wiedersehen. Anna. <laughs> May Allah watch over you. You too, Ali. <laughs> Jolly good rap, comrade Brown. <laughs> Au revoir, Monsieur Brown, et bonne chance. <laughs> Go along, Mosh. <laughs> Goodbye, Mosh. Jimila. <laughs> Macho. Success. I'm Jeremy Brown, English teacher. You offered me a job yesterday. Oh, of course you are. Do forgive me. I'm terribly sorry. I've got such an awful memory for faces, Mr. Brownlow. Brown? Uh, Brown, Brown, Brown. Yes, uh, please. <laughs> Quite all right. <laughs> but when shall I start? Start what? Teaching. I'm accepting the job. Oh. Uh, have you left your other position then? Well, yes. I gave him my notice last night. Dear, 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 dear. That's most unfortunate. Why? Well, you see, we don't need anybody now. The chap that left came back again. Good, isn't it? <laughs> well, not for me, it isn't. No. Oh, no, no, I suppose not. No, no, I... Well, I dear. What will you do now, Mr. Brown? Stop. Brown! Brown, Brown, Brown! Well, there's only one thing I can do. Uh, what's that? Which way's the nearest unemployment exchange? <laughs> Mr. Brown, what are you doing here? I thought you'd left. They were sent I, but the job was already taken. Ah, what'd you do? Well, I went to the unemployment exchange and told them that I had uh, five A-levels and was a B.A. Oxon. What'd they say? Offered me a job as a road sweeper. <laughs> here, have you ever worked on the market? Try to get your job, you know. No, yeah, doing what? Oh, I, I, are you any good at the bunny? Uh, what bunny? The bunny rabbit, the rabbit and pork, the spill, the chatter. Oh, the talk? Yeah. Oh, well, what would I have to rabbit about? Oh, uh, well, look, hold that and I'll give you a rough idea. <laughs> now, you got a stall in the market, you see, and you've got the people around you. And you say, now, come here, I'll tell you what I'm prepared to do. I've got three little lots here, and the gold you get in the chain worth 20 pounds. The gold bracelet worth 15 pounds. The gold earrings, don't they look nice? Don't they look nice? <laughs> you went into any jewelry shop in Oxford Street and cost you 40 pounds. I'm not asking you 40, 30, or even 20. A tenner would be a bargain. One price, one price only. Speak up, speak up, chop. Third come, first term, a five of the lot. I'll take it. <laughs> now, I'm only demonstrating. Oh, sorry. What do you say? No, I don't think it's quite me somehow. You'll have to go back on the dole then, won't you? Well, I could ask Miss Courtney for my old job back. Do you think she'd give it to you? Oh, I'm sure she will, if I crawl enough. <laughs> 
Enter. Hello, Miss Courtney. Mr. Brown, this is a surprise. Did you forget something when you left last night? No, no. And then to what do we owe the honour of this visit? Well, I, uh, you've done something to your hair. My hair? Yes, looks different somehow. Much more feminine. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, if you don't mind me saying so, you really look quite attractive. <laughs> All right, Mr. Brown, what are you after? Um? Well, I'm wise enough to know when I'm being softened up. Now, what is it you want? Oh, a reference, no doubt. Well, not exactly. Well, what is it, then? Well, I'll come straight to the point, Miss Corby. Good. I thought about this new job last night, and I suddenly realised that money isn't everything. Really? After all, you can't buy happiness. So you've decided not to take this job? You're very perceptive. I tried to telephone you earlier today to ask you to bring back the register. Mr English said that you weren't there because there hadn't been a vacancy after all. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> so now you've come crawling back to me, expecting to be reinstated. Yeah, well, I would be grateful. I mean, after all, it'd be much easier on the students. I mean, easier all round, really. Do I quite agree? Oh, good. Except for one thing. I have already engaged a new teacher. No, 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 no. I'm wondering what new teacher will be like. He won't be as nice as Monsieur Brown. Maybe we are we have lady teacher. Yeah. Hey, listen, everybody, the boss is back. Ah. Mr. Brown, no? That's right. She just told us he didn't get the job. He can be coming back here. Uh, it's too late. We got a new teacher. If new teacher leaves, Professor can come back. How can new teacher leave? We fix it. <laughs> we all act as stupid. <laughs> new teacher thinks. I not teach these people. I leave. That's a good idea, amigo. We all give stupid answers. For you, that is easy. <laughs> sit down, everybody. Hi, up, sit down. This is your new teacher, Mr. Wilkins. And Mr. Wilkins is your students. And the other man are Schmidt, Juan Cervantes, Chung Su Lee, Ranjit Singh, Giovanni Capella, Daniel Fab, Maximilian Papandreas, Jamila Sin, Ranja, and Taro Nagazumi. You'll soon get to know them. <laughs> Any problem, I shall be in my office. Right. I do hope we're all going to get on together extremely well. <laughs> now, you. Can you tell me how far you're up to? Por favor. How far <laughs> are you up to? Ah, si, si. Uh, I am uh, uh, five feet eleven inches. No, no, no. Not how tall you are. Five feet eleven inches. <laughs> Never mind. I'll soon find out what progress you've made so far. Now, you. What is the feminine of Drake? Miss Drake. <laughs> really? You. Spell cough. K-O-F-F. -F. <laughs> what is an apostrophe? According to the New Testament, there are 12 apostrophes. <laughs> Peter, Andrew, James, the son of Zebedee, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Thomas, Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, Simon, and Judas. <laughs> you, give me a sentence using the word defer. Minks are bred for defer. <laughs> You, explain the meaning of the phrase, to bury the hatchet. To chop someone's head off. You, complete the following proverb. People who live in glass houses should get undressed in the dark. <laughs> explain what is meant by a circular letter. Most certainly, a circular letter is the letter O. <laughs> you, also. Uh, oh, <laughs> what is an aspirate? It is a tablet. So. You take it when you have cold. <laughs> oh, you, could you please, please tell me what is the opposite of a coward? A bullard. <laughs> well, I am appalled at your lack of knowledge of the English language. In all my years as a teacher, I have never come across a class as ignorant as you are. Well, no wonder your former teacher left. It's enough to make any ordinary man leave. However, I am no ordinary man. I shall look upon this task as a personal challenge. 
I'm going to teach you all English if it takes me a lifetime. Now. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Brown. What are you doing here? I'm not quite sure. Miss Courtney telephoned me this morning and said she wanted to see me. You know what it's about, do you? Got no idea. Why don't you go in and ask her? It's just good. <laughs> Anton? You uh, wanted to see me, Miss Courtney? Oh, yes, Mr. Brown. Are you still jobless? Yeah, I'm afraid so. I was offered another job this morning, but I turned it down. <laughs> Not enough money? Well, no, the money was all right. On the face of it, it seemed quite attractive. Um, office, virtually my own boss. Uh, just didn't like the idea of working below ground. <laughs> On the underground? No, gentlemen's conveniences. <laughs> Well, uh, would you like your old job back? Yeah, but I, I thought you'd already offered it to someone else. Well, I had, but he telephoned this morning to say that uh, he had left. Oh, did he give any reason? None whatsoever. Well, Mr. Brown, I suggest you start immediately. Ah, oh, right, Miss Courtney. On a temporary basis, of course. <laughs> the boss is coming. Okay. Nice to see you, boss. Three hooray hip hips for the boss. Hooray hip hip! Hooray hip hip! Hooray hip hip! hip. Oh, no, boss. Thank you very much. It's all right. We are getting you back. What do you mean, you are getting me back? Well, it's a like it is, Professori. We have the good news and we have the bad news. All right, what's the good news? Oh, blimey. <laughs> we are getting rid of Mr. Willikins so that you can be returning. You mean he left because of your behavior? Not so. Last night, a Monsieur English came to find you. Oh, from the commercial school? Yeah, he's wanting to tell you he has a job for you after all. Oh, well, that is good news. But now we come to the bad news. <laughs> BRB tell Mr. English you are not be one job with him. So instead, he give job to Mr. Wirikins. Hey, we plenty smart, huh? <laughs> oh, yes, plenty. Professori. We have the more good news and the more bad news. All right, go on. First, the more good news. We got eight scoring drawers on the football pools. <laughs> the bad news is uh, we forgot to post the coupon. <laughs> yes, well, I've got some good news and some bad news for you. Firstly, the good news. Now that I'm back, I'm staying. Hey! And now for the bad news. From now on, you get extra homework every night. Did you want me? No, I was just giving your office floor a brush out. How very kind. Good evening. Ah, oh, Mr. Brown, just the man I want. You lucky devil. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Would you step into my office? Yes. Yeah. Not you. <laughs> oh, Mr. Brown. Oh. After you, Miss Courtney. Did you have a nice weekend? Oh, very pleasant. 
I spent two days in lieu. Huh? In lieu of what? <laughs> oh, in lieu of Cornwall. Oh, yes. I have brought something for you. Here. It's a tape recorder. Yes. Oh, that's very kind of you, Miss Courtney. Thank you very much. I didn't expect you to buy me anything. Well, that's good, because I haven't. Oh, but I thought this was a... That tape recorder belongs to the music class. Oh. I thought it might be a good idea if you used it to try to improve your student's elocution. Oh, yes, that is a good idea. How does it work? It is self-explanatory, Mr. Brown. Stop, start, wind, rewind, record. Oh. Shouldn't there be a microphone? It is fully built in. Oh, fully. <laughs> uh, when you have finished it, perhaps you would return it to the music class? Yes, yeah, certainly. You may go. Thank you. <laughs> pompous old twit. <laughs> that old hen, she's such a pompous old twit. <laughs> Haven't you a class to go to? Yeah, I was just going. Oh, just one moment. Something the matter? Yes, it's still switched on. Oh, my... <laughs> being indiscreet. Oh, no, of course, I, I never said anything, did I, Sid? No, not a dicky bird. Never opened his normal shop. Well, we'll see, shall we? I think I'll go and sweep the floor. Yes, I... Stay where you are. Now, let's see what we can hear. When you have finished with it, perhaps you would be kind enough to return it to the music club? Yes, certainly. You may go. Thank you. Here we are, that's it. There's no more. No, definitely no more. Just a moment. Pompous old twit. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pompous old twit. I see. I am a pompous old twit, am I? That wasn't you. Really? Good Lord, no, was it, Sid? No, no, we should never hold in. Yeah. <laughs> oh! <laughs> then who was it? Uh, who? Well, it was... Yes, general... it was the other old boy, like Gladys the tea lady. Yes, that's yeah. right, Gladys. I would hardly call Gladys pompous. Oh, wouldn't you? She can be very pompous at times. I see. Well, perhaps you would tell pompous Gladys that I am waiting for my coffee. Right. Uh, do you know my horoscope was right? I was forecast to clash with authority, ending in disaster. That wasn't disaster. Yeah, well, the night is still young. <laughs> <laughs> there you are. How are you liking it? You are very rude, Ranjit. Also, he's not be spell very good. Please, Lanjit, lap it off before Ari allies. No, you make Ali very mad. Mm. I am not Kari. Yesterday, Ali is calling me a monkey face. <laughs> he shouldn't call you monkey face. Oh, thank you, Max. It's not your fault you look like that. <laughs> Have I missed something funny? No, Professor, he's still here. <laughs> <laughs> you are liking flowers? Scusi? You are liking flowers. Answer yes or no. Well, sure, I like it, the flowers. Good. I'm sending some to your funeral. Oh, gee, put your knife away. Giovanni, sit down. Come on. Oh, wait, you. What hope is there for a multiracial society if a handful of people can't sit down together for a couple of hours without coming to blow? Ah, uh, we only make it a joke. Yeah, well, in future, let's have no more jokes. They only seem to lead to arguments. <laughs> <laughs> Who's responsible for this? Come along, I'm waiting. Right, and if the person who's responsible doesn't own up, you'll all stay behind and have extra homework. It, it was Ranjit! <laughs> well, I suggest you come out here, Ranjit, and rub it off before Ali comes in and sees it. Before Ali comes in and sees what? <laughs> Nothing, Ali. You are hiding something from me. Yes, please, I can see my name on blackboard. We were just about to rub it off. Who oh, play me? <laughs> I can be reporting you to the Monastery of Education. <laughs> Ministry. That also. I'm being surprised at you. Me? Writing naughty things like that. I didn't write it. But you are standing with chalky in hand. That is <laughs> circumstantial. Oh, no. That is most definitely chalky. <laughs> it was already written before I arrived. Oh, -ho. then I'm knowing who is writing it. It is monkey face. <laughs> Get you up the Kaiba! <laughs> sit down the Listen, if I have any more arguments, those persons responsible will be sent home immediately. Well, that's not said. And that goes for you, too. What's the word? No more arguments. Me? Never argue. Always argue. Never. Oh, yes, sir, you do. Oh, no, I don't. You're arguing now. Oh, you always oh, argue. You're still arguing. Sit down. Sit. Right. Now, tonight, we are going to concentrate on your elocution. 
And heaven knows it needs concentrating on. Right. Now, this is a tape recorder. Eh, we're going to have the music while we work. <laughs> no, we're not. We're just going to have the work. I'm going to ask each of you in turn to say something into this, then we'll rewind it and play it back, and we'll correct any mistakes or mispronunciations you may make. Right? You first, Ellie. Jolly good. Uh, what shall I be saying? Well, just say anything at all that comes into your mind. Uh, anything at all that is coming into my mind. Um, uh, anything... That'll do. Yes. <laughs> That's... <clears throat> Here is the news. And this is Maximilian Andreas Archimedes Papandreou speaking it. <laughs> Today, we not have any news. Maybe tomorrow we have some. <laughs> My name is Daniel Favre, 36, 21, 35. I am French, au pair, and I like all kinds of sports, in the doors and out of the doors. <laughs> Thank you, Miss France. Taron? <laughs> One oh, two oh, three oh, four oh. Good oh, good, good. good. Yeah. Um, well, then I'll be. <laughs> I am be speaking little poetries. When first I come to school, I am sit here like a fool. But Master G is teach me how to speech, and now I speak much more better. <laughs> and it didn't exactly rhyme. Master Shakespeare no be rhyme. No, that's true. He doesn't. Not always. Uh, Giovanni. Harry. <laughs> <laughs> Talent contest, just say a sentence or two. Okay, come. Yeah. <clears throat> I am in the English class to learn how to speak the English. Now I speak yeah, the English. And so you still have a lot to learn. <laughs> <laughs> Ranjit. Greetings and salutations to all my friends. Long life and much happiness be with you all. Very nice. I mean, I mean thank you. Well done. Suli, <laughs> and spare us the thoughts of Chairman Mao tonight, please. Thoughts of Chairman Mao wasted on crafts full of ignorant followers of imperialistic uh, policies of aggression. Uh, Only China can flow democracy fully. Thank you, Suli. <laughs> at least you're consistent. Now, one. Uh, one. Uh, I tell you a little story. Uh, uh, my cousin from Madrid, his wife, she goes up to heaven. Spiritus Santo Domini. <laughs> and in the funeral, my cousin, he's very bad. So the priest, he come to him and say, please, my son, don't worry. In six months from now, maybe you find another beautiful senorita and you get married. My cousin, he said to the priest, six months, what am I going to do tonight? <laughs> Uh, I know plenty more. Yeah, we'll save them for tea break. Uh, all right. Right, yes, now we'll rewind this, and you'll all hear how terrible you sound. <laughs> You've all got a long way to go. No, please. The landlord man I'm staying with is telling me I am speaking English much more better than what he's doing. Is he a Londoner? No, he's from Turkey. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wouldn't let it go to your head, Ranjit. Right, now. Pay attention. Uh, you first, Ellie. Jolly good. What shall I be saying? Well, uh, just say anything at all that comes into your mind. Anything at all that is coming into my mind. Um, I don't know. Who, who was that? Who was what? Who were you speaking to? That was you. You were pulling my leggy. <laughs> that was not me. That is a foreign sounding man. Exactly. That's how you sound. Oh, blimey. And all the time I'm thinking I'm sounding good like Sir Olivia Lawrence. <laughs> Lawrence Olivia. Yes, please. You're late, Anna. Yeah. You feeling all right? Yeah. You do not sound all right. Look, if there's anything that's troubling you, yeah, no. you can tell us we're your friends. 
That's right, you let your hair down. Oh, blimey. How can she be letting her hair down when it is not up? <laughs> let your hair down means to get everything off of the chest. Oh, you are be want her to take off her clothes. <laughs> Holy ravioli, these foreigners are all stupid. Come on, Anna, why don't you tell us what's the matter? For the last time, there's nothing the matter. You stop asking stupid questions. I'm perfectly all right. <laughs> I'm returning the tape recorder. I took it back to the music class, but they'd all gone home. Oh, very well. You can leave it there. Have you finished now? Yes, I've just got to give them their homework. I think I've got a slight problem. Oh? Your class is one big problem. Oh, I'm rather worried about Anna. In what way? Well, she burst into tears when she arrived, and so far she's refused to say what's troubling her. Oh, dear, I do hope it isn't Miss Rowbottom all over again. Pardon? Needlework class, last term. Exactly the same symptoms. Weeping all over her embroidery. Refused to say why. Mm. Did you ever find out what, what was the matter? Oh, yes. Was it something serious? Well, as for Miss Rowbottom, she was pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> Please, Anna, tell us what is the matter. I'm all right. How can you be saying you are all right when you have been crying buckets of water? <laughs> you nothing to help. How you know we can do nothing to help if you not tell us your problem? All right, I tell you. I have to go back to West Germany. But why you got to go back? My visa has all pairs kaput. <laughs> Finished. Two years is nearly up. But why not ask for extension? Won't work. I have a friend from East Germany, Eva, also au pair. She's been told she has to go back next month. You don't want to go back? No, I want to stay here. You can be staying with me. I hide you. Nobody will be knowing you are there. Thank you, Ranjit, but it won't work. Maybe you ask for diplomatic immunity. Ah, Suli is right. You can be a detector. <laughs> defector. Ah, that is what I mean. People only defect from east to west. I'm already in the west. <laughs> Go to the Chinese embassy and join with the Republic of China in fight against Russian aggression. I want to stay here in England. I have answer. Become British citizen. How? Wife automatically take her nationality of husband. Hey, that taro's got a something. You must get married with an Englishman. Hey, how about Sid? He is an Englishman. He's already being married. Yeah. We put something in the newspaper. Wanted. Smart Englishman, plenty money. Good looks to marry beautiful German girl. Very sexy. I can't do that. Sure you can. When I marry, it must be Mr. Wright. Is he English? Who? This Mr. Wright. I haven't met him yet. Oh, blimey. How can he be marrying someone he haven't met yet? What Anna means, when she marries, she marries Mr. Wright, not Mr. Wrong. But he's be sound like a foreign person. <laughs> Who? Mr. Wrong. <laughs> Don't take any notice of them, Anna. What I mean is, when I get married, it must be for love. You don't have to live with him. All you gotta do is get a British passport by getting married. Then after a couple of months, you get a divorce. Who's gonna agree to marry me for a couple of months? Hey, plenty people. Hey, now let's think of somebody. First, he's got to be English. Hey, that's right. Hey, and a little bit stupid. <laughs> Somebody simple, huh? Who we can twist round a little finger? It is impossible. Uh, God will find a way. Tell me, where is God going to find a stupid, simple Englishman whom we can twist round our little finger? <laughs> Deo grazia. <laughs> what was that one? Eh, uh, sorry. Nothing, nothing. Right. Now, about your homework. Hey, professore. After class, we invite you to the pub for a drink, huh? Oh, that's very kind of you. Good. But I'm afraid I've got rather a lot of work to do. Oh, oh you me. must come, Bosch. We will be so disappointed if you do not come. Oh, well, if you put it like that, how can I resist? <laughs> now, don't forget, 
We give Mr. Brown plenty of the softer soap. Eh, what is the softer soap? The flannel. Soft soap, flannel. Is she going to have a bath? <laughs> I think he means we are going to be getting Mr. Brown in a good mood. Eh, why don't you speak the better English? Hey, I think they're coming back. Okay, okay, now not to worry, Anna. We fix you up, huh? There we are then. Who ordered what sorts? Ah, Bernard, a nice wine. Orange. Hey, Professori, you sit here next to Anna, huh? All right, thank you. Right, now what should we drink to? To the future. To the future. Salut. Salut. Cheers. You ever think about the future, Professori? Sometimes. You ever think of getting married, Bosch? Not really. Yeah, every man should be married. Mm. Especially to a woman. You ever done living by yourself? Men, no. Uh, not mean to live by bread alone. It is not natural. Men and women are made for each other. In China, we believe it is duty of every citizen to marry and produce riddle citizen. <laughs> you are missing a lot of nice pleasures. You're all very concerned to get me married off. We are only wanting you to be happy. Well, I'm quite happy as I am, thank you. What about you, Anna? You haven't said anything yet. Or are you against marriage? Oh, no, I would like to be married. I can't understand why she's not married already. Such a beautiful girl, eh, Professori? <laughs> Pardon? That Anna, she's a beautiful girl. One day, she's gonna make somebody a nice wife. She's a wonderful cook. Uh, good with the house cleaning. Kind-hearted. Very careful with the money. Always a top. Faithful. A man would be lucky to have such wife. I smell something fishy. Oh, blimey. It must be the curried prawn I'm having for lunch. <laughs> uh, I'm not stupid. This has something to do with you, Anna. Am I right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, we tell you the truth, Professori. Anna is in the big trouble. She, she's got to get married. <laughs> got to. Sure, Bosch. There is no other way. Miss Courtney was right, then. Miss Courtney knows about Anna? Well, she suspected correctly, as it turns out. Can you not be helper, Master G? Well, I'll do my best. Now, listen, Anna, do you know who's responsible for um, your condition? Yeah. Good. Who is it? The Home Secretary. <laughs> your pardon? He is the one. You sure? Yeah, I'm sure. You must be mistaken. No, he is the one. Well, I'm afraid he must have been lying. Who was lying? Well, this person who told you that he was the Home Secretary. What person? Well, the person who put you in the state you are in. Yeah, as a Home Secretary. <laughs> Couldn't have been the Home Secretary. It was. My girlfriend Ava is in the same boat with me. <laughs> You mean your girlfriend is also in your condition? Yeah. Well, both of you were in the same boat with the Home Secretary? Yeah. I can't believe it. It's true. Ava has written to him, but he says her visa cannot be extended. <laughs> Mine also is ending. That is why I must get married with an Englishman. Just a minute. You mean you want to get married to stay in the country? Yeah. And for no other reason? Nine. Oh, well, thank goodness for that. <laughs> Okay, when will we fix the wedding? There won't be a wedding. Oh, oh. Oh, shh, look, Anna, much as I sympathise with your predicament, I can't marry you. It wouldn't be right. I may uh, be old-fashioned, but I believe that people should marry for love and not merely as a matter of convenience. Yeah, you're right. Excuse me. i got to fix my face. <laughs> oh, honestly, I'm surprised at you lot. Concocting a stupid idea like that? We only wanted to help Anna. We had to feel yes. very sorry for her. Yeah, well, I'm sure you meant well. Oh, cheers. Come on, I'll get some more drinks now. Uh, poor Anna. She is going to be very sad. Yeah. We have to fix something, Giovanni. Hey, I got it, Maxie. <laughs> we get him drunk. <laughs> oh, we get drunk. <laughs> Professori! Then tomorrow we not remember anything. And we tell him he agreed to marry Anna 
in here tonight in front of the witnesses. And I will never agree to that. Sure she will. How you know? We get her drunk as well. <laughs> Evening, Mr. Brown? Not particularly. Feeling under the weather? Just a bit. I had a bit too much to drink last night. Ah, buonasera, professori. Uh, How are you feeling, Bosch? Terrible. Last night you were a very happy man. Was I? I don't remember. You not to remember dancing on the table? <laughs> I didn't. You did? With Hannah? Just after you asked her to marry you. Uh, well, I'm afraid I'd... <laughs> what did you say I did? You ask Anna to marry you. Oh, no. Oh, yes. You say you felt sorry for her. You don't want her to go back to Germany, so you tell her you marry her. Are you sure? Positive. She's going to fix the date tonight. You're a very lucky man. <laughs> Congratulations. I don't want congratulations. Well, come to think of it, getting splices is more of an occasion for mourning. <laughs> I am not getting married. Well, they seem to think you are. Well, they are wrong, and I'm going to tell them so. Oh. Right, now, uh, in your places, everybody. Listen, please. I've got something to tell you about... Ah, oh, I'm just the person I want to see. Mr. Brown, what can I say to you? Yeah, well, I'd rather you didn't say anything. What you did last night was wonderbar. Yeah, well, uh, it's about last night, Anna. I, I will never forget it. Yeah, Anna, will you listen to me? But I cannot let you marry me. Yeah, well, I may have had one or two more... What did you say? I cannot let you marry me. There's no need. You, you mean you found somebody else? I telephoned Home Secretary. He can't marry you. He's already got a wife. <laughs> I phone about my visa. And he tells me I can stay because I'm part of Common Market. Oh, that is good news. But how can I thank you for your kind offer? Oh, well, that was nothing. Would you have actually done this thing? Well, yes, I mean, that's what friends are for. <laughs> Wunderbar. You will like Eva. Pardon? My friend. She is from East Germany, so she's not in Common Market. <laughs> for our school fate? Yes, uh, just a few things my students brought in. What are these? <laughs> Seek underwear from Ranjit. Oh, well, I suppose we can always ask the needlework class to sew up the flies and take a bit off the legs and put them in as a pair of football shorts. <laughs> Thoughts of Chairman Mao. No need to ask where that came from. <laughs> Danielle? Max. <laughs> 
your pardon. He swears he found it in his pocket. There's no idea how it got there. <laughs> Likely story. Well, you better bring this along to my office later and we'll lock it up with all the rest of the stuff until Saturday. Very well. By the way, we've got one. One what? Don't you ever read the notice board? No, I don't get a look. Obviously not. There has been a notice on the board for the past two weeks to the effect that we were hoping to get a celebrity to open our school fates. Oh, yes, I remember now. Who have you got? Robert Dougal. Oh. You remember? He used to read the news. Mm -hmm. I've got the art class making stickers with his name on to put across the posters. Buenas noches, senora. Ah, oh, good evening, Mr Cervantes. How's your English? Por favor. Your English? <laughs> your English. Me Spanish. Sorry, I asked. <laughs> Where are the others? Everybody's coming pronto. Oh, good. I come first to talk how you say uh, hombre to hombre. Man to man. Uh, sorry. <laughs> I meet a beautiful senorita. No, no, no. I have met a beautiful girl. Uh, just like me. What's her name? No, 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 I haven't met anyone. I was merely correcting your English. Uh, Spanish. Yep. Why? Uh, so right, so right. Well, I want to take Rita. That's her name. Away for the weekend holiday. Mm -hmm. But she lives with her mother. And she thinks maybe her mother not let her come away with me. What can I do? Well, why don't you ask her mother? I don't want to go away with her mother. That's Rita's mother if you can go away with her on holiday. You think uh, she say yes? Well, I've no idea. What are your intentions? Por favor. <laughs> I'll be blunt. Are you hoping to get Rita into your room? No. Good. No, my room. Her room. <laughs> room. Yeah, well, in that case, I can't help you. You just have to make your own decision. Uh, sorry. Yes. <laughs> Squeeze, please. I'm buying you a cup of tea. Oh, thank you, Ellie. I am buying you a chocolate biscuit. Oh, thank you, Randy. Unfortunately, while I'm coming from the canteen, I am eating it. <laughs> oh, well, never mind. It's the thought that counts. Cheers. That's funny. What is it? This tea tastes like coffee. Excuse, please. It is tasting like coffee. <laughs> oh, blimey. That is explaining it. Explaining what? All the time I'm being in the canteen, I'm thinking my coffee is tasting like tea. <laughs> oh, never mind. I don't think I'll bother. Sit down, everybody. Right, we've still got a lot to do tonight. Um, Max. Would you put that cigar out, please? Sorry, Rosh. Right, now, before we go any further, I want to talk to you about the school fate. We are looking forward to it. Has he got someone famous to open it? Yes, Robert Dougal. Never heard of him. <laughs> I am to see him on television, Master G. Dougal, Florence and Zebedee. <laughs> Jamila, that's a doggy sort of Dougal. This is Robert Dougal, who used to be a newsreader, only he's retired now. Ah, oh, that's no good. It's much better we get somebody who reads the news now. Like a, that Angela Ripoff. <laughs> Ripon. Scusi. I am liking the other one better. Annie Minnie. <laughs> Annie Minnie? She's reading the news on ITV. Anna Ford. Ron Car. <laughs> Miss Courtney should have asked me. What for? You're not famous. No, but I'm a big friend of famous man on television. Another one of your fairy's tales. <laughs> it's true. He's a big star of Celebrity Square Eyes. Hey, <laughs> it's not Bob Monkey House. <laughs> no, Willie Rushington. <laughs> no, the Cockney Man. Not Arthur Mullard. Yeah, that's him. You know him well. Like a brother. He would have been very happy to come and hope on the fate. <laughs> ah, well, it's too late now. We've already got Mr. Dougal. Now, what I would really like to know is what each of you are doing to help the fate to raise money. As you know, whatever we take goes to charity, so we obviously want to make as much as we can. With what we think of, we make a fortune. Good. Uh, tell me what you're doing, Anna. Jamila and me, we bring some bathroom scales and we charge 2p for one weighing. Oh, that's an excellent idea. Ali, what are you doing? Oh, Ranjit and I are having a very good game. We are putting empty tins on a piece of wood. 
And for only 5p, you can be throwing three bollies to be knocking them down. <laughs> are there any prizes? Oh, yes, please. If you are knocking three tins down, you are winning one pound. I don't want to worry you, Ali, but you could lose money on that. Oh, no, you are being mistaken. Nobody is knocking down your one tin. Well, why not? We are nailing the tins to the piece of... <laughs> Very ingenious. But what are you doing? Ah, I make plenty money with Daniel. Yeah, but doing what? Selling kisses. Oh, so we have plenty fun. How much are you selling your kisses for? 5p, 10p and 15p. Oh, what's the difference? Uh, I show you. <laughs> for 5p, you kiss on a one cheek. <laughs> for 10p, you kiss on the both cheek. <laughs> and for 15p... Yeah. <laughs> 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 and I buy one of them 15p kisses. <laughs> You not a you, Daniel, you great Spanish paella. Uh, you don't speak to me like that, you macaroni face. <laughs> do sit down and behave uh, yourselves. Yeah, that, that means you, Daniel. Right, right. <coughs> right um, Max, what have you in mind for Saturday? I tell you. <laughs> the boss asked me to tell him. We both to tell him. Okay. We got a great idea. We got a great idea. A jammer jars. Jammer jars. <laughs> jammer jars? That's right. That's right. You're beginning to sound like an echo, Max. Do you have to repeat everything Giovanni says? Sorry, boss. First, we get the jam jars. First, we get the jam jars. <laughs> you start. We put the jam jars on the floor, and people try to throw 10p into a jam jar. If they miss, we keep the 10p. <laughs> and if they get one in? They win 5p. We can't <laughs> Yeah, I don't think you'll get too many takers. Taro? Ah, so? Yeah. <laughs> Are you doing anything? Yes, sir. Swap or shop? Swap or what? Oh, swap, shop. Oh, yes, really good. Mr. Brown, Miss Courtney asked me to remind you to take your jumble in. Ah, thank you, Sid. I'll be there straight away. Right up. Right, I shan't be a minute. In the meantime, would you turn to page 130 and study the chapter on clause analysis? Uh, Max, would you clean the board? OK, boss. Oh, no. Well, how awful. Are you sure? Oh, dear. Yes, well, thank you very much for telling me. Goodbye. Bad oh, news? Extremely. Mr. Dougal has flu. He is confined to bed. Oh, great. There goes our celebrity. Well, now what are we going to do? We've got no one to open the fates. Just a minute. Max. Max? The Greek? <laughs> Well, he's not a celebrity. No, 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 but apparently he knows Arthur Mullard. You know, that TV chappy? Oh, yes, I think I know the one you mean. Speaks a bit like Sydney. <laughs> That's him. Oh, well, I suppose beggars can't be choosers. Do you think Mr. Papandreas could get this Mr. Mallard? Mallard? Yeah, Mallard, yes. Oh, why don't we go and ask him? What a good idea, Mr. Brown. <laughs> right, Max, I want a word with you. <laughs> I was, um, I was telling Miss Courtney that you know Arthur Muller. <laughs> oh, you are, don't you? <laughs> Come on, speak up. <laughs> Max, <laughs> Max, how many times do I have to tell you? Smoking is well, not allowed. Well, never mind about that now, Mr Brown. You know this Mr Mallard really well, do you? We are just like that. He'd do anything for me. And you say he'd be happy to open our fate? Sure he would. Oh, I expect he's far too busy. Uh, for me, he'd drop anything. <laughs> Good. Then you can ask him to open our fate on Saturday. OK, I ask him to... <laughs> what? Uh, tell him to be there by 12 o'clock. Oh, we'll pay his expenses, of course. Oh, thank you, Mr Papadrias. You have saved the day. Now, come along, <laughs> Mr Brown. You've got to... <laughs> hey, what's the matter with you? You don't look very happy. I'm not very happy. Oh, blimey. I'm thinking he's dropping clinker. Fairy's tales, Max. I did meet him. Once. When? Two years ago. I sat next to him on a bus. <laughs> Oh, 
Greg. Here, yeah. have you heard the news? Hey, They've got Arthur Mallard. Why, what's he done? <laughs> For the fate. He's going to open the fate. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I think he's lovely. He's down at the red line over the weekend, pushing down a pile of pennies. Here, do you think I can get his autograph? You'd think you'd get somebody who could speak a bit better than him, wouldn't you? Well, what's the matter with the way he speaks? Speaks just like you. Yeah, nah, he don't speak nothing like me. He's common. <laughs> what are you going to do, Max? What about? About your great big celebrity friend that you do not know. Nothing? Hey, you've got to do something, Max. Don't worry. I fix everything. Half the class, I go to the pub and telephone Miss Courtney. I tell her I just spoke to my good friend Arthur and he will be delighted to come and open the fate. Unfortunately, he's already engaged. Why don't you tell the truth? I don't think he knows what truth means. <laughs> you all been studying clause analysis? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Good, right, books away, please. Right, Ali, what is an adverbial clause? Oh, blamey. <laughs> Anybody? Right, well then I suggest for your homework, you all write out the chapter on clause analysis. Ah. Right, it's time to go now. See you all at the fete on Saturday. Uh, Max? Yes, Bosch? When will you know about Arthur Mullard? Uh, I go to phone him from pub now. Right. Oh, listen, Max. Uh, use Miss Courtney's phone. I'm sure she won't mind. It's okay, Bosch. Uh, much better high phone from pub. Yeah, well, will you let uh, Miss Courtney and me know as soon as you've spoken to him? Uh, we'll, we'll be here for a while, yeah. Okay. Oh. What do you think of that then, eh, Greg? That's very nice, Sid. <laughs> Nick. Going in for modelling, Sid? No, just trying on the jacket. Miss Courtney said everything on the row was a fiver. Yeah, and very reasonable. Can I pay you now, because I won't be at the fate, that day is not until after the pub shut. I don't see why not. If we can't have first choice, who can? Ah, well, there's my father. Right, I'll see Miss Courtney gets it later. <laughs> Will you be going to the fate, Gladys? Oh, I wouldn't miss Arthur Mullard for anything. Steady now, Arthur. We don't want it knocked down before Sunday. No, that wouldn't do, would it, Lil? Are you ready for another pint? Yes. I'll be back in a minute. I'm just going to the what's it. <laughs> <coughs> what you have it? Half a pint. Okay, okay. Two halves, please, miss. And I'll have a pint of pig's ear. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you couldn't hear very well. Hey? He hears what he wants to. Two halves and some pig's ears, please. <laughs> hey, you better go for Miss Courtney, huh? OK. <clears throat> Shid, you got Miss Courtney's number? Yeah. Well, what do you want it for? I got a phone about Arthur Mullard. Oh, oh, him? Yeah. Hey, do you know Gladys said I speak like what he does? Yeah, that... Hey, wait a minute. What? I got an idea. Yes, come over here. Bring the drinks, Giovanni. OK, OK. Will you uh, make me a favour, Shid? What sort of a favour? <laughs> What sort of a favour? It's worth a quid. Yeah? Who do you want knocking off? Uh, nothing. <laughs> no, no. I want you to telephone Miss Courtney and tell her that you are half a mullard and that you won't be able to come and hope on the feet. I thought you were supposed to have fixed all that. He's a not fix nothing. He doesn't even notice Arthur Mallard. Been opening your Norton South again, have you? <laughs> Will you do it? I'll go on for a quid, I'll do anyway. Hello? Miss Courtney, Maximilian Papandreou here. I got Mr. Mullard to speak with you. <coughs> Hello? <laughs> oh, good evening, Mr. Mullard. It is kind of you to open our fete on Saturday. Yes. That's what I was phoning you about. We can't pay you a fee, but we will pay your expenses, of course. Uh, say, uh, 50 pounds. Fifty quid? <laughs> Cash? Oh, that's lovely. Uh, what time would you like me to be there? Two thirty. Two thirty. All right. I'll see you there on Saturday, two thirty. Tell our love. <laughs> what are you doing? Are you crazy? She's offered me fifty quid in cash. Wrong. She's offered that to half a mullard. <laughs> Look, everybody thinks I speak like him. All I need is a bit of a disguise. 
And a big pair of stilts. <laughs> it's not gonna work, Sid. You're not the fool nobody's. No. Well, at least I try to help, didn't I? Cheers. I've got to get back. <laughs> I'm up the creek without a paddle. <laughs> You're up at the creek without even a boat. Blue, blue. Santa Maria. <laughs> What's the matter? Without the turning round, who does the man at the bar remind you of? How can I see without turning round? Just have it a quick look. No idea. The mallard. Nothing like him. Sure it is. I bet he fool a lot of people. Especially Miss Courtney. Hey, you might be right. Come on. Scusi. Yes? Has anybody ever told you you look alike Arthur Mallard? Arthur who? <laughs> He's on television. I have a good at television. Well, never mind. What are you doing Saturday afternoon? Why? We want you to impersonate Arthur Mallard. What for? It's just to open a fate. It's for a very good cause. Oh, I don't know. It's only for half a an hour and you'll be paid. How much? Two pounds fifty. <laughs> Two pounds fifty? Not bad, eh? Two pounds fifty for only half an hour's work. Very generous. Is that the sort of money this Arthur Mallard gets? Well, maybe he gets a bit more. Three pounds, maybe. <laughs> but you're just impersonating him. Do you think I could do it? Sure. You look a bit like him. Just speak a bit rougher. Rougher? <laughs> this Arthur Mallard, who oh, is a very rough. Is he? He speaks just like a slob. A slob? <laughs> That's because he's thick. Right. I'll tell you something, Curly. What's that? I am off a mallow. <laughs> That's good. He's getting into the box. Lou? Yes, Arthur. Tell these two books who I am. Arthur Mallow. <laughs> <laughs> Holy ravioli. <laughs> he really is Arthur Mallow. Slob, you call me. <laughs> He didn't mean it. Well, I'll tell you something that I mean. You're a loud mouthed, ignorant, spaghetti eating twit. <laughs> and it's only my good nature that stopped me from punching your head in. Mr. Mollard? What? Does this mean you won't be coming to hope on our feet? You must be joking. Now look what you've done, you and your big mouth. Yeah, my big mouth. What about your big mouth? You started it. I tell you something. Harper is right. You are an ignorant spaghetti-eating twit. <laughs> Listen, Shorty, you get up off your knees and say that. Don't you speak to me like that. And don't you push on me like that. Ah, push off. <laughs> Is it raining in the office, Mr. Brown? Hmm? No. But, no, I, I'm just checking it. I'm thinking of buying this. You know that it is unlucky to put up an umbrella indoors? Uh, well, it's a good job I'm not superstitious. Huh. How's that? Oh, very nice. Well, you can take those and hand them out. Right. Now, I think it's time that we were all going home. Oh, well, that's funny. What is? I don't seem to be able to find my coat. Oh, I hope you look. What does it look like? <laughs> Tweed mixture with fur around the cuffs. And uh, fur on the collar? Yes. Oh dear. What's the matter? I thought everything on this rail was for the jumble sale. What have you done with my coat? Fred, <laughs> I sold it to Gladys for five pounds. <laughs> what? Yeah, well, don't worry, I'll get it back. Sid, what? Where's Gladys? She's gone. 
Oh, great. Where does she live? 29 Cornwall Terrace. Right. But wait a minute, if I know her, she'll be in the boozer. Finished! Good. Now, you'll be more careful next time. Here are your drinks. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I shall have to go. Tell our little, see ya. Cheerio, Tell our boys. Gladys. Hello, Gladys. Hello, Gladys. Oh, Gladys. <laughs> Mr. Brown? Where is it? Uh, where's what? The coat you bought. I need it back. It's Miss Courtney's. The coat? Yeah. Oh, well, I've sold it. Sold it? Oh, too. Yeah. Lil, behind the bar. Oh, excuse me. Yes, sir, what do you want? A lady's coat. <laughs> this may come as a shock to you, sir, but this is a pub, not a boutique. No, no, I mean, the coat Gladys sold you. I must have it back. Bit kinky, are you? <laughs> Pardon? I've heard about fellas like you dressing up in women's clothes. I don't wear it. It's our school principles. I, I sold it to Gladys by mistake. Oh. Oh, all right. I'll go and get it. Thank you. Hello, Bosch. What are you doing? It's a long story. Oh. Here you are. Oh, thank you. And here's your uh, five pounds. Ten. Oh. <laughs> oh, pardon? I bought it for ten. Oh, great. Ten. Tar. Hey, you want a drink, Professori? No, thanks. No time. I've got to get this coat back to Miss Courtney. <laughs> Stand. Jolly good. Yeah, and be quick, oh. Um, we might sell a few before the official opening. Hello, Bosch. Oh, Max, where's Arthur Mallard? Well, it's like this, Bosch. I. Uh... Maybe he's had an accident. Tell him, Maxie. Well, down in the basement, we have a gymnasium. Very nice. Hey, Mr. Brown. Uh, this is Mr. Brown, our English teacher. How'd you do? And you know Max, of course. Yes. Very good of you to come. <laughs> well, it's all in a good cause. And I couldn't let a mate down, could I? <laughs> I told you he was a friend of mine. <laughs> well, come along now. It's time we opened the face. Oh, uh, Mr. Pavardress, I wondered if you'd be awfully kind and get my coat for me. I think it's hanging on a rail in the office. Oh, no. <laughs> now, what's the matter? It doesn't matter. See you at the fate. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? Oi. Oi, I turn it up! 
Hey, what's the matter, see? Walking all over my floor. Hey, what do you want us to do, fly? <laughs> I've just washed it. Hey, not look very clean to me. No, it won't look with you lot trampling all over it. Come along, you three, back to your desks. Come, Come on. with you in a minute. All Get right. on. Hey, where you go? If you must know, I'm going to see a man about a dog. Ah, that's right. In you go. Right. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but I told you to wash this dog. You did, but... but... do it immediately, it's disgraceful. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Hi, everyone back? Well, I must say it's nice to see you all working hard for a change. Si, sí, Senor Brown. We study for our eggs and ham. Eggs and ham? Si. Sí. In few weeks we have eggs and ham. The word is exam. Ah, sorry, Rockdam. <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Brown. Yes, Miss Courtney. I am extremely worried about the forthcoming examinations, particularly so far as your English class is concerned. Another failure would be unthinkable. Oh, don't worry, Miss Courtney. This time we will sail through. You had better. <laughs> However, in order to reassure myself, I am visiting each class in order to check on its progress. I am just on my way to the woodwork class, but I shall be back in a few moments to give your students an oral test. And I do expect some correct answers. Oh, we'll do our best. I just hope your best is good enough. <laughs> Do not worry, we will be surprising Miss Courtney. Yeah, well, that's exactly why I'm worried. <laughs> Por favor. First one. Eh, uh, did you buy the dog? What dog? <laughs> the one you go see man about. <laughs> I went to spend a penny. Ah, very cheap dog. <laughs> Now, I checked your homework last night and you're still making far too many elementary mistakes. For example, Ali. Yes, please. The letters OHMS stand for On Her Majesty's Service and not for only Hindus, Muslims and Sikhs. Jolly <laughs> good. Fine. Si, senor. A sex step has absolutely nothing to do with orgies. You're wrong. <laughs> you're wrong. I beg your pardon? Uh, see, si. last week I see a film Swedish sextet. Yeah, well, never mind what you saw. A sextet means six people. See, si, like in the film. There were six big Swedish girls with a big... Yeah, don't <laughs> you just look it up in the dictionary and write it out ten times. That's right, that's right. Suli, to complete the phrase as wise as, you could have put an owl or even Solomon, but not Chairman Mao. <laughs> wiser than everybody. Yeah, well, that's your opinion. Uh, Anna, yeah. a sorcerer is a wizard and not something you put a cup on. <laughs> mm. Danielle, congratulations. Absolutely perfect. Mm, thank you. But what about my homework? <laughs> I was referring to your homework. Oh. Giovanni, the correct word to describe a relative by marriage is in-law, as in brother-in-law, and not as you put, outlaw. <laughs> It's the same thing. It is not the same thing. An outlaw is a bandit. Well, so is my brother-in-law. <laughs> yes, well, I hope you find Miss Courtney's questions as amusing. She'll be here any Excuse minute. Me. Don't interrupt. I tend to tolerate your frivolous attitude, but you'll find that Miss Courtney is a horse of a different colour. Oh, blimey. You should not be calling Miss Courtney a horse. I wasn't, although there may be a certain resemblance. <laughs> Mr. Brown, please. Just a minute, Daniel. I haven't finished it. As I was saying, Miss Courtney will not be as tolerant as I, but on the other hand, you mustn't let her intimidate you. She may be a bit of an ogre, but uh, <laughs> she's only human. Excuse me, please, Mr. What's Brown. to you, or why are you constantly interrupting me? I think they are trying to indicate my <laughs> Ah, Miss Courtney, I didn't hear you come in. Obviously. How long have you been long here? Long enough. And now, Miss Brown, if you don't mind, this horse of a different colour, this human ogre, would like to find out how clever your students are. Yeah, well, certainly, they're all, they're all yours. Now, who would like to be first? Well, don't all rush to volunteer. <laughs> oh, very well. I will ask a question, and uh, anyone who wishes may answer. Now then. What is a circumflex? Oh, come along, circumflex. C I R C U M F L U X. <coughs> I'm sure somebody knows what a circumflex is. Uh, yes, please. Good. What is it? No milk today. <laughs> I think 
beg your pardon. So sorry. Circumflex is an accent mark. Would you bring me that piece of paper, please? Which piece of paper? The piece you are hiding in your hand. You are meaning this one? Thank you. Mr. Brown? Mr. Brown? Yes? Would you wait in the corridor until I have finished with your students? Well, I... I... Good, and shut the door after you. Oh, and Mr. Brown. Yes? You might as well take this. You may need it for your milkman. <laughs> now, to continue. I am a foreigner. Nine. You are English. <laughs> well, let us imagine that I am a foreigner. Please, Miss Courtney, what kind of foreigner are you being? Does it matter? Oh, yes. How can we be imagined when we are not know what to be imagined? <laughs> Oh, very well. I am Russian. And if anyone says, well, am I Russian too, I shall scream. <laughs> now, Miss Schmidt. Yeah. I approach you in the street and I say, please, will you tell me the time? What is your reply? Time you bought yourself a watch. <laughs> that is extremely rude. I do not like Russians. <laughs> Let's try it with some general knowledge. Mr. Singh. Where is uh, Sydney? Outside, cleaning the corridor. <laughs> Not the caretaker, the city. Thousand apologies. Anybody? Australia. Good. Mr. Nakazumi. Ah, sir. What can you tell me about the Duke of Windsor? Uh, which one? There is only one Duke of Windsor. Not so. Near where I live, there are three Duke of Windsor. Two Dukes of Cambridge, and one Prince of Wales. I was referring to the person, not a public house. <laughs> Does anyone know what the letters GC mean? Giovanni Cupello. George Cross. What class is he in? <laughs> I don't think I can stand anymore. Mr. Brown. Finished already? I am leaving while I still retain some shred of sanity. Well, you obviously didn't give her very good answers. Hey, not our fault. Questions were too difficult. Well, you just have to work harder, right? It's almost time to go now. Don't forget your homework, please. See you tomorrow. Oh, God, not again! Haven't you finished yet, Sidney? I've washed it twice. Well, wash it again. It's still dirty. <laughs> Time to go home, Ellie. Oh, blimey. I'm not wanting to go. What's the matter? Can I be speaking to you most confidentially? Yes, of course you can. Fire right away. What's your problem? You see, my wife, Rihanna, she's becoming another person. Oh, dear. Have you tried hormones? <laughs> what are you meaning? Well, I don't know much about these sex changes. Oh, no, she's not doing anything like that. No, but you just said she was becoming another person. Yes, she's becoming another lady person, not man person. Oh, I see. You mean she's behaving differently? Yes, please. Mm. She's making phone calls. And when I'm coming in, she's hanging up chop chop. <laughs> and at night times, she's going out, leaving me in the house with the baby. Ah, I'm beginning to see daylight. Of course, it is not being dark yet. <laughs> no, you have just had a baby. No, my wife had the baby. But that's it, don't you see? Lots of women change after they've had babies. It's called postnatal depression. I'm sure she'll get over it. Some night, she's not letting me sleep with her. Have you thought about getting an au pair? Oh, blimey. She would not be letting me sleep with an au pair. I need to help with the baby. Sorry, please. I also think she ought to see a doctor. Oh, no, she's not liking doctors very much. But she ought to talk to somebody. Perhaps you could talk to her. Me? Yes, please. Well, I hardly think I'm qualified. You must be helping me. All right, I'll come home with you tonight and we'll see what we can do. Jolly good. All right. Yes. It's probably nothing. Ah. Good night, Sid. Good night, Sid. <laughs> Hello, my beloved. Baby is fed. Curry is in oven. I am going out. Where are you going? 
pleased to be minding your own business. Hey, I'm bringing Mr. Brown home. Hello, Mr. Brown. It is good of you to be keeping Ali company. Yeah, well, actually, I came to... Well, uh... have a nice evening. Do not be waiting up for me, Ali. See? See what I am meaning? Where is she going? What is she doing? Who is she seeing? Well, you wait here. I'll follow her and see where she goes. Staying late tonight, I think Ali is getting suspicious. <laughs> Stockroom keys back. No, oh, thank you, Sydney. If you see Gladys, tell her she can take my tray. I take my tray. Where to? Not you, Gladys. Oh. Oh, you're wearing a black tie, Sydney. Yes, I'm in mourning. Twenty-eight years to the day it happened. Oh dear, the death of a loved one. No, I got married. <laughs> <laughs> you're a real male chauvinist pig. Pardon? Pig. Oh, you've met the wife, have you? <laughs> That will do, Sydney. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah, that's the fella I want. Hey, I, I want some advice from a man with experience. Oh, well, I've, I've been about a bit. Uh, what do you want to know? Well, I, I need your help as a married man. Oh, I am sorry. You I'm kept it dark. I'm not married. You are. Oh, don't remind me. Look, son, if you're thinking of taking the plunge, forget it. It's worse than doing porridge. <laughs> now, what can I give you some advice on? I've changed my mind. I don't think you are qualified to help me. I'll ask Miss Courtney. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Is it time, then? What time are you referring to? Lesson time. Oh, no. Rehana is coming to see Mr. Brown. This is Seed, our caretaker man. This is Mrs. Nadim, the wife of Ali. Oh, very nice, too. Huh? We are making for him a surprise. It is thank you party for being such good husband and giving me beautiful baby. Oh. But we are not wanting him to be finding out. No, already he is most suspicious with me going out to arrange everything with Ranji. Oh, don't worry, I want to tell a dicky. Never mind this dicky. <laughs> you should not be finding out. That's what I just said. When's the surprise? Tonight. You are welcome to be coming if you are wishing. Oh, Tom. Jamila is making lovely food and Gladys is making delicious cakes. <laughs> Please, where is Mr. Brown? He's in Miss Courtney's office. Good. I must be asking him to be keeping Ali late after class so all students can be arriving for party before he is getting home. Oh. While you are seeing Mr. Brown, I go to be speaking with Gladys. Oh, good. And you can buy me a nice cup of tea. See you later, love. <laughs> See who that is, Mr. Brown. Tell her. You tell his wife. I wonder what she wants. Are you sure you didn't tell Ali about her affair? Positive. I just told him I'd lost her. Well, perhaps he wants to confide in you because you are Ali's friend. Oh, well, couldn't she uh, confide in you? Certainly not. It is your problem. You will deal with it. I'll leave you alone. Mr. Brown will see you now. Sorry about that. Uh, come in, Rahana. Sit down. I am wanting to be asking you something. Yeah, well, before you do, I've got something to tell you. Please sit down. Oh. <coughs> 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 
I have been waiting. Yes. Uh, look, uh, firstly, tell me something. Do you love Ali? Oh, yes. Very much indeed. Good, good. Uh, well, what I have to say is, is rather delicate, uh, but you, you and Ali are both sensible, intelligent people. Thank you. And you've been married for almost two years now, and you've now got uh, a lovely little baby. Yes. Well, I, I want you to know that I understand how these things can happen. What things? Well, not babies, but... Um, well, look, uh, let me put it another way. When two people um, have been married for a while, sometimes familiarity creeps in. Two people living together, doing the same things day after day, seeing the same faces. It's only natural that uh, occasionally one of the parties feels that something is missing, some uh, excitement, perhaps. So it's not unusual in these occasions for one of the parties to meet somebody else, uh, to try and recapture the first flush of romance. Mr. Brown? Uh, please, uh, let me finish. Let me say just one thing. The vital question you must ask yourself is whether to likely throw away what you have already for some uh, passing infatuation or to rise above it and start afresh. To err is human and to forgive, divine. That's all I have to say. Oh, I see. Now, what was it you wanted to ask me? No, it is not important now. Well, Mr. Brown, how did you manage? Uh, extremely well, I think, Miss Scott. Oh, sorry. I was um, very tactful and, uh, well, I think she got the message. Here, are you all right? It is Mr. Brown. He is telling me something terrible. What is it? It is my Ali. He is having an affair with another woman. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Ranjit. Good evening, O oh most wise and illustrious one. Yes, well, I wish I could say the same about you. Incidentally, before the other students arrive, I have something to tell you. I know everything. That is why I'm calling you most wise and illustrious. <laughs> I mean about what you and Ali's wife have been up to. Thousand apologies. Well, I think it's Ali you should be apologizing to. Why should I be apologizing to Ali? For your behavior. After all, she is his wife. I am knowing that. That is why we are keeping it secret from him. <laughs> you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Oh, no. I am very pleased to be doing it. Yeah, I, bet you are. <laughs> I am sure if she's asking you to do the same, you'd be most happy to oblige. <laughs> I hardly think so. Please, not to be telling Ali. Well, I won't. For his sake, not yours. Good. We are not wanting him to be finding out before tonight. Well, why tonight? Tonight, he'll be knowing everything. Are you going to tell him? No, he'll be seeing for himself. <laughs> Good Lord. It will be a big surprise. I think it'll be more of a shock. <laughs> you are also coming to the party tonight. What party? The one we have been arranging for Ali. I'm getting a bit confused. You are saying you are knowing everything? Yeah, well, I just realized I don't know quite as much as I thought I did. Now, tell me something, Ranji. Have you been seeing Ali's wife? Most certainly. To be arranging the party for him tonight at 10 o'clock. And that's all? Just a party? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Buenas noches, Senor Brown. Juan. Si, Senor. This is an English class. When you arrive here, I expect you to speak English. No more Buenas noches. Good evening. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Good evening, Senor Brown. <laughs> that's better. Ah. Buonasera. Eh, no, buonasera. Speak it English. <laughs> Don't you tell me to speak it English, you great Spanish onion. <laughs> I punch your head in, you, you Italian ice cream. Yeah, all right. I can do. Sit down. Uh, you tell him, signore. Uh, but I'm telling both of you, you sit down. It's all right, it's all right. And I'll tell you what I told one. This is an English class, and when you arrive here, I expect you to speak English. No more buonasera. Good evening. Okie dokie. Good. Galisperas. Good night. Bonsoir, Monsieur Brown. I give up. That's <laughs> much to see. Oh, good evening, Jamila. I have knit for you a scarf. Oh, very kind of you. <laughs> very patriotic. <laughs> Not quite long. Ha, huh. it is be start as pair of sockies. But I am forget to turn round here. So I make it a little bit more longer. Yes, well, thank you very much. Sure, it'll come in useful. <laughs> ah, good evening, Sumi. Yeah. Carol. Good evening. Yes. 
Right, now, bef before we go, um... Before we go any further this evening, the uh, Education Authority are taking some kind of census and require these forms filling in. So um, it's self-explanatory if you'd uh, complete them now. And then if you have any problems, don't hesitate to ask, because that's what I'm here for. All right? Eh, I have a problem. Pan, how can you have a problem? You haven't even looked at your form yet. No pen. <laughs> Ah, right. Yeah, right. right. Anybody else got a pen? Yes. Good. Yes. Good. Right. Now, all you have to do is fill in your surname, your first names, your address in England, your birth, occupation, sex, marital status, and what subject you're taking. Excuse me. Yes, Giovanni. I have had a problem with my first names. Well, surely you know them. Sure. Giovanni, Vincenzo, Marco, Dino, Alberto, Lena. Yeah, oh, all right. So what's the problem? I can't get them on the paper. <laughs> well, just put as many as you can. Okie okay, Monsieur Brown, please, um, I do not know the name of the hospital where I was born. You don't have to put the hospital, just the town. Just the town? Have you put the hospital too? No. Place where born, bed. <laughs> Finish. Good. Correction, not so good. Por favor. The correct answer to sex is not at least once a week. <laughs> you should put male or female. Eh, hey, no sex with male. <laughs> Only female. Squeeze, please. Uh, I'm hey. being late. You almost missed the census. Rihanna is still being very mysterious. Oh, look, don't worry. Everything will be all right. Tonight at 10 o'clock, all will be revealed. Are you really sure Ali is knocking about with another bird? Yes. Mr. Brown would not be telling me lies. Yes. Oh, they're all alike, these men. <laughs> Doesn't deserve a party like this. I am yeah. being so unhappy. I know what I would do. What? Kick him out. <laughs> Anna is right. He is be being unfaithful. He behaved like an animal. He deserves what he gets. Yeah. He does. Hello, my beloved. Don't you beloved me, you... <laughs> You very bad man, you. Mr. Brown is telling me you are having girlfriend. You damn fool. Why are you saying that for? I didn't. You've obviously misunderstood me. You are nearly breaking up my marriage. Oh, I am sorry, Harry. It is you I should be throwing cakey at. Please, you cannot be throwing cakey at Mr. Brown. I will do it. What? <laughs> we want? A five. Where five? There! I say 
are getting better. Yes? Yeah, you're starting to hit the board. Good. <laughs> Oh, dear me. It's a good thing you were wearing a turban, Randy, otherwise you would have gone straight through your head. Uh, did you uh, spend the weekend with your boyfriend? Nein, I have no boyfriend. Oh, that's a pity. Everyone should have a boyfriend. I have no boyfriend. <laughs> I, I was referring to the girls, Randy. No, I once had a bad experience with a boy. A bad experience? Yeah. What, you mean he tried to get you into bed? Nein, <laughs> not bed, sleep. Bed, opposite von Gut. Oh, bad. Yeah, bed. Oh, yes, what happened? I cannot tell you. It was too awful. Uh, a Japanese philosopher say, confession, very good for so. Yeah, tell us what happened. Well, you don't have to if you don't want to, Anna. Maybe it is better I get it off my breast. Yes, <laughs> yes please. Question four. Explain what is wrong with the following sentence. Waiter, I would like some chops of pork. Waiter, I would not like some chop support. <laughs> no, Ali, that's not right. Yes, please. It is against my religion to be eating pork. <laughs> Camilla? G. Now be careful. The feminine of monkey. Monkey? S. No. No? No, the feminine of monkey is monkey. There is no difference between masculine and feminine. Squeeze, please. You are mistaken. <laughs> I'm seeing them in the zoo, and there's a very big difference. <laughs> Uh, Ranjit, complete the following proverb. A bird in the hand... ...makes mess on your wrist. <laughs> Hi. Si, senor. Give me the opposite of the following words. Ready? Not ready. Yeah, I hadn't started. <laughs> Fine. I, I lost. That's enough. Uh, that's not enough. Stop. Uh, go. Sit down. Stand up. Oh, somebody stop him, please. For you? I'm gonna do some impersonations. Okie koki, here we go. Hey, you want a nice piece of salami? I've got a lovely piece for you. And who is that supposed to be? That's my butcher, Antonio. <laughs> we have never heard of your butcher. Maybe not, but if you add, it's a very much like him. <laughs> Don't you do any impressions of any well-known people? Sure I can. Jimmy Cagney. In a scene from the film, Disaster on the Fifth Avenue. <laughs> you dirty rat! <laughs> I'm gonna fix you. Well, I must say that I am extremely disappointed in you all. It's not your fault, Professori. We're not past because we're stupid. Yeah. <laughs> and what does that make me? I'm more stupid. <laughs> exactly. Out of ten students, I have nine failures. Really sorry, I'm right. Congratulations. You're getting ten out of ten. <laughs> Sydney. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, Miss Courtney. Did you tell Mr. Brown that I wish to see him? Oh, yes, definitely. <laughs> yeah, I think this should be all right. Dear Miss, I'm writing to tell you of my feelings for you. I think you are beautiful. I want to hold you in my arms and kiss you. Please say you feel the same about me. All my love. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> If you felt ill, what would you do? Go to bed. <laughs> but before that? Uh, take the clothes off. You would go to the doctors? No, no doctor. Doctor killed my uncle in Madrid. <laughs> really? Gee, my uncle, he has pain in the chest. He goes see doctor. Doctor, he listen and say, so I. <laughs> Ten minutes later in the street, my uncle, <laughs> finito. What a heart attack. Motocar. <laughs> well, you can hardly blame the doctor for that. Che, the doctor, he was driving the motor. Excuse me. Ah! Ooh, ooh. You start 
startled me. Do you mind knocking before you barge in? I'm sorry. <sighs> Is that better? I've lost it. You've lost what? I have lost my favourite fly. I had it in my hand a moment ago. I must have dropped it. Can you see it anywhere? What does it look like? Well, it's about two inches long, red and black, and it's got a curly tail. That's... <laughs> Perhaps it's flown out the window. <laughs> it is a fishing fly, a cocky bondu. A cocky what? Bondu. <laughs> oh. It must be here somewhere. Oh, well, if it's here, we'll find it. Oh, uh, well, perhaps I should come back later. Oh, Mr. Brown, you can join in. Yeah. Well, I'm not really that religious, actually. <laughs> we are looking for a fly. A fly? Oh, yes, it's a two inches long, brown, red and black, and uh, got a curly tail. Sounds quite lethal. Oh, would you mind helping us look for no, it? No, not at all. Oh, I found it. Where? It's here, just under the desk. Oh, I'll get it. No, stand back, Sid. You leave this to me. <laughs> what are you doing, Mr. Brown? Stay where you are, Miss Courtney. This could be dangerous. Yeah, that's good. Not moving now. Mr. Brown. Uh, just a minute. Better to be safe than sorry. <laughs> Jim Miller, would you like to present your case for the good of television? <coughs> Gee. <clears throat> I am like very much the television. The television make people most happy with good, good program like Coronation Street. <laughs> Coronation Street? Ha! Huh. And last week, I am watched this week. Oh, you watching this week? Last week? This week is the name of a program, Ranjit. Thousand apologies. <laughs> and also, television is be free. You have to buy the license. Mm. What license? <laughs> Haven't you got a television license? No, no need license. I'm sorry, Jamila, but you do. No. Look, it's an offence not to have one. If the detector van comes round, you could be heavily fined. No. Look, don't argue, Jamila, it's the law. Not for me. Why not for you? No have television set. <laughs> Watch next door, they have license. <laughs> Thank you, Jamila. Right, Ali, your turn. <laughs> Last night I'm seeing somebody been drowned, then shot, and then had their heads chopped off. What was that, the professionals or Starsky and Hutch? Tom and Jerry. <laughs> India! <laughs> oh, very nice, Jamila. It is Jamila, isn't it? <laughs> this Germany! <laughs> what do you think? Very Teutonic. Thank you. Miss Greece! <laughs> oh, don't take the mic. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Grease. <laughs> <laughs> Are you comfortable in that, Max? A bit cold, boss. <laughs> Representing Italy or the Mafia? <laughs> I represent Sicily. I'm not quite sure what to do with you for the moment. Oh, well, it's just nice enough to see that case will just going away. Not going, going anywhere. Just sit down. For a start, you can concentrate on your diction. Well, I don't have a thought. What are you well, for example, repeat after me, the fat black cat sat on the mat. The fat black cat sat on the mat. No, no, no. Let's take each word separately, all right? Oh. The. The. Fat. The. No, not fat. 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 Black. Black. Cat. Cat. Sat. Shat. On the. On the. The. Uh, uh. Matt. Matt. Good. Now try the whole thing. I felt like I shot a mark. Juan. That's it, senor. Would you like to read us your essay? So I. What I believe by Juan Cervantes. Para servirle. So far, so good, eh? Yes, come on, get on with it. So I, so I. I believe. In one God. And I believe in Jesus Christ, Spiritus Santo Domingo. <laughs> now, 
Jesus Christ <laughs> was the first Roman Catholic. We'll start with you, Juan. I don't know this man, Arthur. <laughs> Arthur is fictitious. <laughs> but you say he's a bus driver. <laughs> to make believe I made him up. Ah, imaginario. Yeah. I want you to make up a story using your imagination. I understand. Uh, once upon a time, there was a man called Nickel Ass. It's not quite right. No? No. Once upon a time, there was a woman called Nickel Ass. No. <laughs> it's pronounced Nicholas. It's all right. Once upon a time, there was a man called Nicholas. He was a postman. Postman. No, no, no. Postman. One, a man who delivers letters is called a postman. A man who sticks posta, postman. <laughs> Bill Sticker. No, no, his name, Nicola. <laughs> you are not paying attention. Si, plenty attention. All right, what did I just say? You say, Juan, you're not paying attention. I, uh, yes, but before that one. Uh, before that, uh, you're right, I don't pay attention. <laughs> We were discussing I before E, except after C. Ah, it's all right. <laughs> spell receipt. Por favor. You heard spell receipt. Uh, R, E, C, uh, I before E, except C. <laughs> e. <Good>. I, T. <laughs> Uh, come on, think. You've missed something out. What comes before tea? Uh, breakfast. <laughs> then, what about a nice smile yeah, for your then. auntie Glad? Oh, you know you're a lovely fella. <laughs> I say, Gladys is going to tickle your tummy. <laughs> Here, give us a nice kiss. <laughs> You, Ali and Anna, do you come out here, please? Now, you have never met before, and you are sitting on a park bench, Anna, uh, Anna, when along comes Ali and sits next to you and starts a conversation, all right? Carry on. Uh, good morning, lady. <laughs> come along, Anna, say something. I never speak to strange men in the park. <laughs> Very commendable, but let us assume that this time you do. Start again. Good morning, lady. Good morning. It is being a very nice day. Yeah. Oh, no, this is supposed to be a conversation in English. Up to now, you've said, Guten Morgen and ja. Could you try and speak in English, please? Start again, Ali. Uh, good morning, lady. Good morning. Oh, blimey. <laughs> it is being a very nice day. Yes. It is nice weather. Yes. It was also very nice weather yesterday. Yes. Perhaps it will also be nice weather tomorrow. Yes. Or perhaps it could be raining. Yes. Perhaps it could be raining. Yeah, all right, that'll do. Thank you both of you. <laughs> Absolutely scintillating. Max and Daniel. Would you come out, please? Right, now, let us assume that you are at a party and you've just been introduced to Daniel. Now, use your imagination and uh, make a conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, beautiful. Hello, gorgeous. Hey, uh, this party not very good, eh? Uh, why not we go uh, somewhere else? D'accord. Let's go back to my place. Okay. <laughs> Pranjit, it's your turn. Pick a subject. The British is less. Right. What is the capital of England? E. <laughs> what a 
Buonasera. Giovanni, what time do you call this? Eh, uh, ten past seven. <laughs> You're late. Haven't you got a watch? Ah, oh, I had a watch. It was a beautiful watch. It was rust-proof, shocker-proof, waterproof, everything. The only trouble is it wasn't quite superproof. Superproof? Yeah. Last night I'm working in the restaurant and whoops at the daisy, I dropped it in the sofa. <laughs> and what is your name? Roger Kenyon. Roger Kenyon. Ah, Miss Courtney, I'm just uh, completing the register and getting the details of our new student before that inspector chappy <laughs> pokes his nose in. Hello. Mr. Brown. I shan't be a moment, Miss Courtney. What is your job? Inspector. Oh. What, local transport? <laughs> local education authority. Ooh. <laughs> we go outside to have a punch down. You mean a punch down? <laughs> I'm going to where? Uh, how you say, yeah, knock his bloody block off. <laughs> We see who's a bloody blocker he's a knocker <laughs> Oh, just a minute. What is all this about? I tell you, Mr. White. Brown. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> it's about where we sit. Well, what's wrong with where you were sitting before? It's uh, my eyes, professori. I've got to sit nearer the front. Here. <laughs> oh, I see, and I suppose it's got nothing to do with the fact that Danielle is sitting here too? She is? <laughs> <laughs> I never noticed! You see, so my eyes, I'm a little shorter sighted. And also, I'm much a bigger liar. It's not true, Mr. Green. The name is Brown. You see, I'm a color blind as well. Look, I, I really think you ought to go home. No, I stay. Yeah. What is going on? What is going on? What is going on? Um, yes, well, I I'm talking to this lady. Why is she here? What was she? <laughs> I could have sworn that woman wasn't pregnant yesterday. <laughs> You're safe now. Thank you, Daniela. Thank you. Thank you. Are you going? Yes. Ah. To get a cup of tea. <laughs> I want a one cup of tea. Oh, blimey, the surrender. Ah. That was sounding like my Ranjit. Hey, he's just come behind those curtains. <laughs> <laughs> Come out, Ranjit. I am knowing you are there. Come out. What is this? It is orange. <laughs> orange. Orange. That's better. You really must work at those R sounds. I try very hard. Try saying, round the rugged rock, the ragged rascal rag. <laughs> Lound the lugged lock, the lugged rascal. Um, uh, Giovanni? A lima juice. Good. One. Cow juice. No. Good morning, Sydney. Good morning, Miss Courtney. It's very sad about Mr. Brown, isn't it? Terrible. I thought you might have gone to the funeral this morning. No. I've got far too upset. I know what you mean. It's so tragic. Taken so young. It's terrible. Well, I can assure you I am very much alive. Uh, then whose funeral have the students gone to? Oh. 
It as well. another Mr. Brown. Ah. We must be making big celebration. Yeah, why we not go to the pub? Lighty yeah. hall? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll second that. Ah. Hey, I push you. Hey, no, I push a professor. Ah, I, I push, 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 push you. you. I push you, me. I'll push you. Thank <laughs> you.